Hello and welcome to episode 110 of Jesus. the Parapod. <laughs> it just keeps getting bigger every week. Jeez, we're really getting on. <laughs> we're really getting on here. 110. So that's that's we're ne- we're we're well over two years. Um, well over two years. Yeah, well over. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, jeez. <yeah. laughs> <laughs> did we even did we mark that? I don't think we did. What the two year anniversary? Do we? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think. <laughs> just forgot Come about it. <laughs> Come be ours. Yeah, it's hundred episode one hundred and ten of the Parapod. You're here with your hosts, Mark and Owen. Um, this is one of our <laughs> one of our. This is every right. episode is now. <laughs> every episode is a recommended film episode. This episode we'll be talking about SLC Punk, a nineteen nineties film about the punk scene. I believe it's nineteen nineties, anyway. Yeah, I think it is. But. Uh, before that, we have many things to get through. Many things have happened. Many things to discuss. How have you been in the last week or so? I've been pretty good. I've been pretty good. Um, okay, I can't find out where that film is. But okay. Um, okay. No, yeah, I've been pretty good. Um, have I gotten up too much in the past two weeks? No, <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, not really. No real news or anything. Yeah, not really. really. Yeah, it's like getting on. You know, it's just. January's already gone by. We're into February now. Yeah, January flew in, I have to say. Yeah, didn't it? Yeah, it was an awful, awful month, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> it was. So bad. It's my God. A, it was not a good month. Yeah. I did a barista course on the weekend, actually. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah, I just did a one-day yoke. Tell me about it. Um, Yeah, it's good. Making like making coffee, like uh, espressos, mm. that shit easy. The hard part is uh, making the milk for lattes <laughs> and stuff like that. That shit is hard. <laughs> Uh, the the coffee in the boiling water is easy. Yeah, that's it. That is easy. Like it's just measuring out stuff, and then you know, sticking it into the little machine and pressing the button, and then, you know, making sure that because the way because I didn't know this, the way that like there's different recipes for different types of coffee. Obviously, that makes sense. But like down to how fine it needs to be, like mm. how much the coffee needs to be ground up, how much you need to be, you know, um putting into the coffee machine mm. and how long it takes for the water to go through so like the the way that they had us doing it was like th- it needs to be your espresso shot needs to be filled within 30 seconds um there's like a 28 to 32 seconds but 30 is like what you need to be aiming for 15 grams of coffee 15 yeah 15 grams of coffee actually i've, I've no idea what oh no wait 20 grams of coffee 20 sorry grams, okay. 20 grams of coffee um and there was something else. There was another factor that I can't remember what it was. Um, <laughs> 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 so it went well. <laughs> you're, just, uh, you're staring at Starbucks. Like, like, there's something on me. It was the third thing. <laughs> 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 um, but that was easy. But then the froth and milk, man. I don't know. Because like, the way how they does, had How does that work? I how, know. I like... Cause I, froth I, the milk. Back when I used to work, back in the bar game, mm-hmm. we used to have a coffee machine. And people would like, if I would, it's like, so you'd have like a, maybe a, a three to 12 shift. You'd have mm-hmm. a day shift. So I'd come in at three and then I'd be there on my own for the first three hours-ish before I started getting busy. Yeah. And between three to six is people coming in. They're just meeting up, having a single pint. A lot of people coming in and asking for coffee. If I was there, a brand new, brand spanking new coffee machine mm-hmm. right on the, the, the counter. Uh, people come in, be like, could I have an, uh, like an Americano or whatever? And I'd be like, sorry, it's broken. So every <laughs> single person. I used to have to do it like 10 times a day because I just, I had no idea. Americano, I eventually figured out. Mm-hmm. It's pretty simple. Yeah, pretty simple. <laughs> it's just a big shop express on yeah. hot water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, uh, like people come up to me like, cappuccino, latte. I'd be, like, I'd be like, fine with the coffee and the water. But then they had like a frother, which like, you like, you could bring, it's like a microphone kind of thing, mm-hmm. and you could bring it out, and then yeah, there's, there's yeah. a specific cup you had to use. Mm-hmm. I had no, I had, people showed it to me three or four times, I had no idea how it worked. Yeah, man, because like, it was even like, because the barista course is like very like artisan, like, you know, you have to be very exact with like, not even exact, but it's like, we're not using, you know, thermometers and the fucking jugs and stuff like that to figure mm-hmm. out. So he's like, you need, it needs to be between 60 and 65 degrees, because anything above that, you can need to get sued for that. Oh, really? You can get sued if they spilled it. The milk. The milk, yeah, because uh, above 65 degrees is legally too hot to serve mm. uh, a liquid in, uh. so it needs to be 60 to 65, um, and then if they ask for a hotter, you can give it to them hotter, but like, it's like you fucking asked for that, so, you know, <laughs> cop on <laughs> if you spill it. How is there a record of any of these things? If they spill oh, the coffee, how, how do you know what temperature it was? No idea. How can you say, oh, they asked for it to be that temperature? Uh. So just check the cameras. So you won't have audio. Check like. the microphones. <laughs> check the microphones. <laughs> 
<laughs> Rip said <the> coffee machine. <laughs> yeah. So just speaking to that microphone and saying that again. <laughs> just for, uh, you know, GDPR, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but uh, the way you have to do it is you stick the milk into the cup, obviously. You jam it into the old um, frother yolk. You turn it on and uh, it's like you heat it up, You got to like hissing and then you have to like bring the spout just underneath the milk level. Mm. And then it starts to froth, and it's like one Mississippi, two Mississippi, and then you stick the froth, the spell back into the milk to get it hotter. Mm. I don't know if my hands are just not very sensitive to heat, because um, the first time I did it, he said once it gets too hot to touch, like turn it off. So I did that. Mm. I just let it like until it was too hot for me to hold. I took it off, and he was like. That is way too fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that's even too hot for someone that asks for hot. And I was like, oh, okay. So then I was like... Is there a hand out lava? Like? Because I, I was like, okay, if it's too just hot for me to touch... Yeah, just bo- <laughs> it was like 80 <laughs> something degrees or something like that. Um, so, then he's, so then I was like, okay, fine, right. I'll, um, <clears throat> I won't do it that hot. But then I could never... Then I, Every time I did it then... It was way below 60 to 65. It was in like the uh. 50s. So I could never... I think I did it like 10 times and I got it right twice. Just pure guessing. <laughs> just pure guessing. I like could never figure it out. Yeah. And my latte art though, it was solid every time until I fucking spilled it every single time. Your latte art? Yeah, my like, oh. love hearts and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think it's just mostly like practice. Mm. This is how you do it, but... Yeah, I'm gonna be a qualified barista soon. Ooh, what, what what qualifies you? Do you have another day of training? No, there's an online course. Ah, okay. Which is just like an hour and a half long like lecture, and then you do a quiz. Oh, right. And if you get it wrong, this is like you can keep just doing it again and again until you get it. <laughs> so you were been banished from the yeah. uh, the society of <laughs> you coffee flung baristas out of <laughs> college <laughs> of coffee college you failed barista college. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee college. <laughs> Coffee college, Jesus. Uh, that would, that'd be fucking... Spend 150 quid on this. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you just fail. <laughs> 150 quid. Oh, tell you. But, um, <laughs> but it was funny because it was like me, it was like six people in the class. Mm. And me and, this, and the young fella were doing it for like, you know, you know job opportunities and stuff like that. Yeah. The other four were just like, you know, we have a coffee machine at home and we want to know how to use it. Why don't you just look it up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, we want to know how to use it really well and get, like, you know, a certified. I was like, you want to be a certified dickhead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa, what's going on there? Like, yeah, I don't know. Just, why don't you just use, like, use the machine you have? Yeah. Like, just re- read the manual. Like. Just Google it, surely. Yeah, just look it up. Yeah, I don't know. But they're just like... So you have a cert, fair enough, you're going to get a job out of that. Yeah. It's like, if you're certified to go home and make your own coffee, like, <laughs> why did you buy the machine? Uh, one, of the, one of the fans was like, yeah, my kids bought me a machine and it was like, I'm fairly certain the machine he said was like over a grand or oh, something yeah. like that. Oh yeah, they cost like insane amount. They yeah. cost at least a grand. They cost, yeah, they're like, I think it's like a grand and a half for most of them. Mm-hmm. And, um, they must come with certs or something like that or like, certificate or they like have to come with something, something they have, they to, have yeah. to but then um he was like yeah it's just sat in the gaff and like every time i use it like, it doesn't taste very nice so my kids bought me um this barista course it's like you're a fucking dope <laughs> 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 just say it to his face <laughs> you're an idiot <laughs> <laughs> why did you do that <laughs> you're here for all the wrong reasons yeah. i'm I here for the love of coffee yeah i'm here for, I'm here for the artistry <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're a fucking Poser man, yeah. <laughs> like, this is coffee. Like, stand up, I got blue hair on, like it's LT Punk. Like this is coffee, man. <laughs> Anarchy. <laughs> Kick him in the face. <laughs> Just some some six year old dial. Like, yeah, yeah. You're He's a probably what he was. Poser man. <laughs> you're a coffee poser man. <laughs> you're a fucking fed man. <laughs> you're fucking fucking. I'm redneck. not making lattes for the fucking fed. <laughs> You're all part. Of, you're part of the system, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he says he was a very nice man, though. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> oh, that's it was, great. It was funny about the reasons why people were doing the course, though. Yeah, yeah, that's, <clears throat> that is strange. Yeah, one of the fellas there, he came in late, and um, he was from he was from Budapest, or was he from Turkey? I think he's from Turkey, mm. and um, he had some disability or something like that. But so I didn't, couldn't fully understand because he had like a speech impediment. But then he was, he also had like some other disability. Mm. Um, but 
I'm fairly certain he said that he was a barista in Turkey, but he couldn't get a job because he'd walk into someone and say, yeah, I was a barista in Turkey, and they're like, prove it. <laughs> 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 so he has to do a, so he's like, oh, fuck, I have to do a, I have to do a chorus to get certified. <laughs> prove it. <laughs> what does that even mean? How is she supposed to prove it? Was it video, CCTV? <laughs> There's me. <laughs> so I think he had to do a course um, just to fucking get. That's awful. Now, to be fair, it's man. <laughs> to be fair, if he was a barista in Turkey, he's the shit barista <laughs> I've ever fucking seen. I, I was shit barista in Turkey. <laughs> no one will give me job. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god! Oh, stop! <laughs> oh. Was he bad? No, he wasn't bad. He actually oh, had the yeah. best latte out of out of the lot of us. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, Turkish coffee is really good, apparently, isn't it? He <laughs> was <laughs> maybe it's just a shit. Maybe he was just... the shittest out of the best. <laughs> he was at the the bottom of the top. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> he was on the ball though with all the fucking um, all the um, oh, what's it called, like health and safety stuff oh really oh man he was on the ball with it jesus he was like um because there's a young fella there who was like you have to use a certain rag when you're cleaning certain stuff to not like you know cross contaminate yeah and every time he just like fu- like you put on the surface that you're not meant to put it on and your man ali would just come over pick it up and slap it down to where it was meant to go and the trainer was just like here uh fucking whatever your name was mark whatever the fuck the news name was if you have a if you have a like a manager like Ali you are fucked like you will you're not gonna last a day because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. keep making mistakes <laughs> Jesus <laughs> that's a bit harsh <laughs> this it's is like, a it's like like, paid to be freaking <laughs> shit bro <laughs> sound <laughs> so you're the teacher <laughs> what the fuck oh no this sounds so... comical I wish I was there <laughs> it was a fun day to say it was a fun day yeah that sounds great it was all day, man. It was half ninth of half four. It's <laughs> grueling. It was, man. It was me feet all day. It was bollocks <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> so, just imagine like kitchen nightmares kind of stuff. Yeah, know? Gordon Ramsay walking it's in. shit. What are you? An idiot sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the trainer was doing with me. Loser latte. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. yeah, that is comical. Yeah, it was good fun though. <laughs> I'm not certified yet, but you know, I can make an espresso at the very least. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no. dear, dear me. Yeah, I've not the top that I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got we got when we were talking about mm. before the podcast, but got delayed going home on Wednesday. But I didn't realize what was going on because oh, where I work, I normally get the 16, and I walked to the 16 bus stop. And I watched it count down from 20 minutes all the way to one. Never showed up. There's nothing, there's literally nothing worse. It, there's nothing more demoralizing. And like, more, I... Ever get to the point where it's like, it's like, it's gotten down to one minute and now it's, it should be, it's due. Mm-hmm. And then it's, it's been about three or four minutes. And do you ever feel like, like the, the need to start laughing? Sorry, I, I feel like I'm about to maniacally start laughing. Like, <laughs> in like the street, it's just like, it's, it's all one big joke, you know? Yeah. It's all a big prank on me, you know? And everyone's looking around as well. Everyone's the same as like, fuck's sake. Everyone's like, will I leave? Will I stay? Will I bother away from this? Yeah, yeah, you're caught in a complete fucking limbo as yeah. to what to do. So then I was like, I watched the countdown and th- I still don't know where those buses go. Like, how does a bus count down all the way and just never appear? I should. I waited an hour for one bus here today. And it was, I, I literally, because there's nowhere, it's, it's, I was at the terminus. Or, or I, was at, I was at the, the, the departure point, mm-hmm. like the first stop. So, like, there was three buses that were due. So where did they go? Where did they, yeah, where did they do this, like... <laughs> they didn't start. Where did the they, they go? Went off on, like, a side mission yeah. down fucking Bray, like... <laughs> it just didn't show up. There's three of them. Like, there's no way. I don't know. I don't know where they go. I need to know. I want... <laughs> I need there to be some investigation to be like, where do these buses go when they don't... <laughs> where they don't show up, like... We have 10,000 like, unaccounted for buses Yeah, they're, in all, they're all going missing. <laughs> 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 yeah, we need a top man on the case. Yeah, so then I was just like, I was like, I was, so then I was standing there and I was like, oh, right, it's twenty minutes until the next sixteen. Will I stand here or will I go? And then I looked at my phone. I was like, all right, the fourteen is in eight minutes. I can make that if I move. Mm. And I walked and I got there within five minutes. And the bus said seven minutes away. And I was like, oh shit, that's not a good sign. Yeah, fuck. And I watched it. Uh, and I watched the the first the the top of the table like the closest bus stick at five minutes 
while all the other buses were catching up and I was like, oh shit, this is not good. Yeah. And then two buses were counting down at the same time and neither of them appeared. I was like, oh, bollocks. So then I was like, all right, fuck it. I'll start walking. So I walk around, you know, past Conley Station, queues of people standing waiting for the bus. Mm. I almost felt like just saying like, Oh, don't bother. <laughs> just move. Don't bother. <laughs> don't bother. Just fucking keep, start walking. Yeah. Um, so then I got past uh, Conley. I don't know what the name of the road is, but... Um, Amy Street. Amy Street, but it's like, I don't know if it's... It's like around that... Um, you know that um, it's like uh, petrol station that's like... Yeah, near the five lamps. Yeah, like near enough to that. Annesley Bridge. Honestly, man, road. Man, you're saying it like uh, all these places. Someone said to me the other day, "Where is Angel Street?" And I was like, "I actually, I have no idea where Angel Street is." I know where Angel Street is now. I have no idea. where it's it is. It's up near like uh, Stevens Green kind of area. It's near Camden Street and all that. Yeah, yeah. But, but like, where? I've no but idea. I've only ever. I was like in my head. I was like, Angel Street. And I was like, where is that? Because I could just hear a Dublin <laughs> bus saying it. But I was like, I don't that know, lady. Yeah, <laughs> that woman in my head. <laughs> I could hear her, but I couldn't. I couldn't remember where I hear her say that. Yeah. yeah. Um. But uh, I saw a guard car. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And then I see these fucking signs being like, "Refugees out" and whatever the fucking bullshit was. I was like, ah, it's you, cunts. You're the cunt. so my hatred of Dublin bus subsided and shifted yeah. over. And I was like, oh, it's you fuckers that are causing me to have to walk home. As a dangerous man, then I fucking walked an hour to get home. Yeah, that's rough. Oh, what a bollocks. That's not right. Those bastards. Bastards. Those bastards. Those jobless cunts. Ugh. We need to we need to ship them off. Give, Honestly, the, give the refugees their gaffes. It's like, oh, they're coming over and taking our gaffes. It's like, what are you providing? Yeah, what are you what doing? What are you providing to you this? You have con- a job. Yeah. Go get, you <laughs> you just have a gap. You're taking up space yeah, for people yeah. that will work. <laughs> give me your gaff. If you won't give it to me, give it to them. Mm. You know? It's absolutely it's pathetic. Absolutely pathetic to see. Um, it's so fucking They're all hard. absolute... Um, you know, morons. Yeah, morons. There's no, there's no decent word to explain. Yeah, there's no, you know, there's no appropriate word. Stupid cons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're they're pond life, pond life. Uh, but most of them aren't. Don't don't mean badly. You know. They That's the annoying thing about they're, it. They're just idiots. Yeah. They're just, they're, a lot of them are idiots. The leaders, though. The, le- the leaders. They're the, the problem. They're the problem. And something we need to do something. Forget about the refugee situation. There's something needs to be done about them. Yeah, you know, far right heads. A, a final solution for the far right of Ireland. <laughs> That's what I propose. <laughs> a very simple proposition. It would mm. solve a lot of our problems. I know we can move on to more serious. Is things. the fucking Nationalist Party part of that whole scheme, or what's the crack? Yeah, man, they infiltrate the whole thing. It's yeah. like so. You know the same way, like obviously they're not equivalent at all. But another you know way, like um, it's just like a strategy. Like uh, PVP would use housing. It's like uh, campaigning on certain issues, like ha- housing crisis. Uh, I remember the water charges, all that stuff. They yeah. use that. They make rallies around a single issue, and then they organize the rallies as like an apolitical event. Mm-hmm. Or not apolitical, but like it's like a yeah. you know big tent kind of event. And then they go there and they hand out leaflets and stuff. It's yeah, just like yeah. a, you know campaigning. That's what they do. That's what the IFP do, or is it was it the IMP Irish National Party? Yeah, yeah, INP. They go there and they like all the fucking them and they're like absolute those goblins. goblins. They organize these like. Like all like the the biggest idiots in Dublin, they get them all into one Facebook group. They like show up. They're like, oh yeah, the problem is some guy who like doesn't have, who, like, has no money and is like has no power in this country. He's the issue. Yeah, he's the issue. He's the problem. He's the cause for the housing crisis. Yeah, yeah. Not, not the government or you know the the other confu- like or you know big vulture corporations which are all foreign as well but all the rich people they don't, yeah, have, a exactly. with, they don't have a problem with the foreign vulture funds coming yeah. in and taking up stuff exactly, they care about yeah. the poor you know refugees who are escaping you know yeah. violence yeah yeah people who are like escaping for their lives German pension funds and Yanks buying up Chi- Chinese well buying up half the city mm-hmm. they're like they they don't even I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I don't think the IMP people are even aware that that's a thing. They don't have like that higher level, mm-hmm. you know. They they have the mon- critical thinking. They have the monkey brains to see what's in front of them. Some homeless guy who's from Syria or whatever. It's like he's the problem. Yeah, it's him. No, they can't actually read. Fucking, they can't read. Yeah, full they stop. can't read. So they organize these awful, like fucking disgusting, <clears throat> uh, grotesque protests, mm-hmm. and then they hand out their leaflets and they're like, oh here. Yeah, I know a way to like to sort this out. Vote for the IMP, and they pick on all the same. They pick on Sinn Fein strongholds. Yeah, you know, like working class areas where people just kind of generally defer to the, like the more left wing nationalist mm-hmm. cause. 
Um, because that's easy. It's 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 easier pickings. Yeah, it's easy to get the those like left leaning nationalist people yeah, to yeah. move over to like go further with that nationalism where it goes right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The wedge. Yeah, they get that wedge, and then they try. This it's going to be a total failure. They'll get zero percent at the next election, and uh, it all feels out. I'm mm-hmm. very very confident of that. Oh but yeah. At the same time, it's very irritating. I it's wish it's irritating w- and a worrying trend that like people fall for that type of bullshit oh no yeah yeah, yeah. you know you know well, there's a lot of silly silly people out there most people are for perfectly nice though mm-hmm. very very smart people and um, it's a very small loud piggish minority i i don't know anyone who actually defends uh i don't like closely know anyone who actually like would even no. vaguely defend what they do you know? yeah and if i did it'd be like you're a fucking it, dope if i did i would stop talking to them <laughs> yeah i'd be like you're a cunt yeah you're just a cunt <laughs> you, yeah. you are just a you're cunt. an idiot yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's no point talking to that person um the Pyro Pod recommends getting rid of bigots out of your life. Yeah. Uproot them. Your life will be better. Yeah. Isolate them. Mm-hmm. Make them feel ashamed. Shame them. Shame, Shame. them. Shame. Shame them. Attack them. Attack no, them. No, 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 no. Milkshake no. them. <laughs> 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 no, we condemn all violence. We do. We do. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, that's so annoying. There's nothing worse than a bus not showing up. Oh, man. There's something unbelievably fucking annoying about it. Rage inducing, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, I am. It's after a long day of work. So I just, just want to get home. I just want to get home. You're sitting there an hour in the freeze and cold or lashing rain. You're like, oh, what? Like, what's the pro? Like every other, every other city they complain about. It's like another way other cities complain about. Oh, we have a housing crisis here. And you go over there and you look on their like their listings and stuff. And like, there's loads of shit there. Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's kind of expensive, you know. Yeah. So like the, uh, they're it's like we, we got fuck all here and it's mad expensive. Yeah, we can't <laughs> afford it. And there's literally nothing to actually. To, to take mm-hmm. and then other other cities like oh my god the buses they're not very reliable here and you go there I was like oh the bus is five minutes late so every it sh- and, it e- jo- and it does show up but it shows up <laughs> here it's like every bus is five minutes late and half of them don't just don't show up at all yeah. like it's like what's 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 going on I did, we I propose it's a very it's a very bold I've always been in favor of banning cars always I've in always the city center ban, you ban cars within about. 5k in the city centre but mm. well, maybe not 5k maybe 2k 2k is yes, yeah, all entirely pedestrianised only buses fuck taxis as well we need to take away their lane there's no no other country has lanes for taxis why will, do taxis I will have ex- a lane I will accept this if we get 24 hour buses as well that's new exactly. to you yeah, yeah, of course. yeah of course yeah what the fuck yeah. what's that about what's that about yeah 24 hour just like public transport <laughs> come on get on that like please on, Ireland do please, like, please. Like, like, please. Can, can we get one thing fucking right please yeah just one and can, if it's gonna be transport oh my god the difference that would make I would that would ch- literally change the game you know what we should do we should we should we should invite the Chinese in tell them we'll give them our ports mm. they can have the treaty ports you know cove and the others whatever the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have they no can, idea they can use our ports as a as a base in Europe if they build us high speed maglev trains all across the country within one year mm. and if they don't get if they don't meet the deadline one year then they don't get the ports they would they would be like yes they'd be, oh, like, we'll be, they'd, they'd be like we'll do it in six months <laughs> we'll do it in two months we'll do it in a week <laughs> we'll uh, get this shit done we would change the game in this country honestly god I think that's actually a good idea yeah, I mean, I just, I just have to fuck. I don't care about shit. I know it happens in the geopolitical landscape, but as long as I can get into town, you know, quicker. That's all, that's all I care about. <laughs> all I care about. That is, um, you know, that's like a right wing um dog whistle as well. Well, um, like what's what's one thing you want to improve about the country? It's like the trains to run on time. Oh, uh, Mussolini. Yeah. A, a right, everything's a right wing dog whistle. <laughs> There's so many right. So, well, sometimes where are, the, where are the left wing dog whistles? So, yeah, yeah. Sometimes <laughs> it's just like. It's just a reasonable request. It's like, I just want the trains want the train. to run on time. I just want the bus to be on time, please. There's no ulterior motives here. I like, I'm, not, just, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not promoting any form of fascism, but I just want the bus <laughs> to be on time. You fascist. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Leo would say. Yeah. He's like, yeah, we're trying to improve public transport. You're a fascist. Mm. You know, Mussolini wanted that too. You sound like Trump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, stop. Sure, look. What can you do? <clears throat> That's it. What can you do except for stay at home and just watch movies and you know, <laughs> never uh, never leave the house? Yeah, stick on the VR headset. Uh, watch the movies. Close the curtains. Uh, cry yourself to sleep. That's what I've been doing, you know, basically for the past two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the movies. All right. Where, the, the, the where will we begin? Where will we, will we continue on with the Alien vs. Predator franchise? Let's do it. We are now on to the second Predator installment, Predator 2. 
1990. Is this a 1990? 1990, yes. Yeah, I think it's a 1990 or is it a 93 or something? It's 90, 1990. 1990. Um, I just want to pull up the director because I think the, pred- the director did something as well. Predator 2. Predator. Stephen Hopkins. <coughs> Stephen Hopkins. He directed Nightmare on Elm Street 3. I knew he did something. <laughs> yeah, that was it, basically. Well, yeah, that's more or less it. That's the only thing I recognize. Um, yeah, this is... Um, what's the guy's fucking name as well? To be fair, this film is very well directed, in my opinion. Danny Glover. That's what the guy's Danny name is. Danny Glover, yeah. Yeah, it's Darren Danny Glover. Um, yeah, I remember watching this film when I was younger and being like, oh, I think I prefer Predator 2 to Predator 1. And I think the reason why I thought that is because there's way more kills from Predator in this film. Um, but on rewatch, it is a very well directed film. Mm. Um, but I think that Predator doesn't work in his city. There is something very... It, what I felt, I thought it was more like... It was kind of like Robocop. Yeah. It was kind of like... like why? Like it could have been any... It, it's not necessarily Predator. You could put pretty much any... Like, not even a supernatural being. Like, any kind of like sci-fi icon in Predator's place, mm-hmm. and it would the film would be the exact same. Yeah, it, it, like, there's nothing distinct about Predator in this film. Like, it could yeah. literally... It could even have just been a dude. <laughs> yeah, if it was just a guy, it'd just be like a, like a 90s action movie. Yeah. yeah. It, that's, what it, that's what it felt like. It's way more of, like, a 90s action film. Because mm. even, like, it's just, like... There's a there's someone murdering all these like top drug lords. Mm. He's a vigilante. We need to figure out who he is. Mm. But then it's like, oh, it's just a predator. It's just a predator. It's just a predator. <laughs> Which is even just fucking weird in general. Like, yeah. why is the predator ex- exclusively targeting mm. gangland people? Yeah. And like, there's that one scene in the on the shuttle where there's like loads of civilians killed, and Danny Glover's like, it's because they were armed. And it's like, ah, oh, yeah. Finally, that comes into play because I feel like I feel like L.A. Uh. America, at 1990s, I feel like Predator been gone on a rampage. The amount of people that have been armed, yeah, it, was, it wasn't everyone armed, yeah. <laughs> so it's just kind of, it's yeah, because I feel like in Predator, the first one, it really doesn't matter. Like, there's no, uh, like the Predator doesn't care who's in front of him. Yeah, yeah. But in this one, he's like stalking and like taunting Danny Glover. Mm. Um. It's really weird. I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't feel like Predator. Yeah, no. Like it's it. It's like a. It's as if it is just a, a '90s action movie <coughs> where they put Predator as the bad guy. Mm. But it could literally have been any other. Could have been anything else. <laughs> it could have been literally anything else. Uh, saying that, I enjoyed this film a lot more than I thought it would. Yeah, same. I thought I actually really liked this film. Yeah. Aside from like the vague racism. Um, <laughs> I remember, <laughs> I remember watching this as a kid, and then I haven't seen it in years. And I was like, I don't think I'm going to enjoy this as much. And I know, I remembered the Jamaicans, and I remembered the like the Mexicans Jamaicans. and stuff like that. I was like, well, where did the Jamaican cartel come from? <laughs> the, the Jamaican voodoo cartel. Uh, yeah, yeah. What the hell? It's like this is set seven years in the future. <laughs> <laughs> this is set nineteen ninety seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what did they think was going to happen in this, the seven years after they made the film? Fuck it out. But uh, yeah, what were you saying? Um, I remember thinking like, oh, I know when I was a kid, I never really would have noticed that. But God, am I got? I feel like this one was gonna be like pretty racist, and it was. <laughs> it, re- it really is. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes around killing uh, Colombians and Jamaicans. Kills uh, a lot of people of color. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but aside but from that, I thought it was very good. It's also weirdly like pro cop as well. Because you have like Danny Glover and there's a bit where there's like he has 18 accounts of aggravated assault and stuff like that. <laughs> but he's the hero. It's like, this is the guy. This is the type of cop that we need in a city like this. Yeah, yeah. Police brutality. Police yeah. brutality. And it's like glamorizes is like a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. T- the tough cop. I suppose that was kind of like it was kind of the it's style. Fairly back then, fucking it? standard. Yeah, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be talking about a film later on that also has that. So <laughs> yeah, oh, you couldn't get away with that today. No, <laughs> but no. Could you? <clears throat> no. Oh, yeah, you definitely could. You'd, could you? Oh, I feel could like you, you could. Oh, so? uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. It's um, but this film is a lot. I think it's it's a pretty decent film. I I, I like this. Mm. I actually liked this film. It was very. It's very like. It's strangely pleasing to look at. Yeah. It's, it's weirdly well directed. It's really like, and it's like, 
like it's set in LA in the summer and like everyone's sweating balls. Yeah, yeah. And, but like you feel it's like one of those times like one of those few films where like you feel the heat. Yeah, yeah. The like the humidity in the air. Yeah, the waves in the air and you mistakes you know predator. For yeah, the, the I, that, yeah, it kind of yeah. adds to like psychosis that everyone's going yeah, through. Kind yeah, of, it's, it's cool. It's very good. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed this much more than I thought I would. But it's also it's getting like a big. I don't know whether it's the algorithm hearing the fact. Maybe it's my phone listening to me right now, hearing the fact that we're talking about it. But this is getting like seems to be getting a big push in Disney Plus. It was like it's been on my like the fr- the front of my feed for the past like three weeks. Oh, weird. Maybe Predator too. Have you been watching Alien films? Um, no, I just watched Predator. I suppose I watched Predator two weeks ago. That must have been mm, it. Yeah, it might have been like, it. Because it's because my Disney Plus started doing that to me because mm. I was watching all the Alien films on my Disney Plus and was like. Here's the Predator films as well. Did you know they're connected? <laughs> <laughs> what? Never knew that. But no, it, it is. It's it's a good movie. Mm. Um, it's it's also it's like it's it's. I don't understand why people hate it. I don't get. I don't really get why people hate it. Yeah, it's because it's not like a. It's not a. It has thirty. I think it's thirty percent Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. I, I don't. Like I don't understand. No. I I, re- I don't understand. I understand maybe like, you know, sixty percent. Yeah, I, I it's a solid three star film. It's a very solid three star film. I don't understand why people don't like this film. I don't understand why it has a reputation as being a bad film because it's actually pretty good. Yeah, it, it, compared to a, like the Alien films that were like Alien out. Three and Alien Four, Jesus, yeah. fucking miles better than either of them. This film dances on their heads. Um, I feel like that might be the fucking tone though with Predator go- throughout. Like, I feel like Predators might be better than I remember it being. Predators, like uh, with Adrian Brody. Yeah, I feel like that film might be better than I remember it being. Maybe. I feel like, I feel hopeful for that film. Are we gonna watch that film? Oh yeah, that's the next one. We're gonna do that one. Nice. Um, Let's and do it. then we can do the Predator too as well. The Predator. The Predator. That's yeah. like the the, the more recent twenty seventeen. Shane Black directed Shane that. Shane Black. Not a huge fan of him. Mm, yeah, Iron Man. Iron Man Three. Three. Yeah. He did something else though that was good. I'm pretty the sure. Second worst Iron Man. Is Iron Man 2 the worst one? By far. Yeah. Yeah, fair. <laughs> um, the, um, what's your man's name? He was in, um, he was in Aliens, and he's in this as well. Game over, man. That guy. Ah, uh, Bill Paxton. Nice guy. Well. Bill Paxton. Yeah, he's yeah. in this. I forgot he was in this. He was at the JFK <clears throat> assassination. Was he? Did you ever see that? There's a picture of him shaking hands with JFK uh, on the day we show. He only died recently as well. Pretty sus. That is pretty sus to ask pretty me. Sus. And then he was in Predator. And Alien. And Alien. And How many fucking universes is this guy in? This guy loves being in sequels. <laughs> 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 no, yeah. and he's good in it as well. It's um Yeah, it's not like it's not a film that I have like lows to say, but it's um it's a solid pick. Um th- I always think that the um they really linger on the alien head. At the like when they have that little Easter egg, I wouldn't even say it's an Easter egg because it's like it holds on uh, on the alien head, like the xenomorph skull in the like spaceship for ages, and then it pans down to the human skull. But like for the first few minutes, it's like, am I meant to be looking at the like the xenomorph skull here? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then it pans down, it's like, oh, he's looking at, at a human skull. Yeah. But like it doesn't really come across like that. Mm. He's got some cool tech in this film as well. He does, that yeah. disc. Yeah, what the hell is that disc? That disc is serious. <laughs> it, it fucking fucking karate chops Gary Busey. Yeah. <laughs> he's just he's just dust. He's just he gets creamed by the disc. <laughs> After, I think he's like, it's between me and him, and it just immediately gets so oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Busey. Oh my god. Yeah, I think the fucking all the characters are pretty fun. I think this is the first film I've ever seen Gary Busey in. I've only ever seen it previously seen him in like the uh, Celebrity Apprentice and stuff like that with Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just only known it, knew him as a friend of Donald Trump. <laughs> but uh, he's and he's like a living meme in American media. It's like Gary Busey, you know. Like he's like uh, he's real weird. He's I have, very strange. This is the only guy. film I've seen him in, and I know him for somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone knows Gary Busey, but no one actually watches his movies. No, geez, man, he's in 135 films on Letterbox. Yeah, he's a very weird looking guy. It's kind of distracting. Yeah, I don't know. Jeez, he's in loads of shit. <laughs> loads of shit I've never even fucking heard of. Mm. Nor will ever watch. What's What's his most famous film? What's his highest rated film? Uh, well, the hi- the most the one that he's most known for on Letterbox is Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Ah. And then Lost Highway, Point Break. He's in Lethal Weapon. Oh. And then The Player, which I've heard of. Then it goes to Predator Two, and then the next film, which is a couple of rows down, that I know him from, or that I I've 
ever heard of is uh, Piranha 3 Double D. <laughs> <laughs> so a solid uh, repertoire right there. Solid filmography. Gaddy, Gaddy Brucey. Yeah, that is it. Gaddy. He's a very, he's got a strange smile. He really does. It looks kind of like a, uh, I don't know, he's, he's kind of chalky. He's made of chalk. Adam Baldwin. Is he one of the Baldwins? I'm sure he is. Let's see. He doesn't really look like him. No, he doesn't, but he's a guy in this film. I don't, I don't, even, I don't know who he is, but I just saw the um, the name. I was like, oh. How many Baldwins are there? Yeah, I suppose, like, how, like realistically, he was born in Chicago, Illinois. He has three children. He's been registered voter for the Democratic Party. Uh, maybe he's not. Maybe he's just another actor called Baldwin. He's in video games. Adam Baldwin. Yeah, look that up. Is he one of the Baldwins? But, um... Oh, yeah, man. He's in everything. He's in Independence Day. He's in... Yeah, he's in loads. Jacket. Yeah, he's in loads of stuff. Yeah, yeah, Is yeah. he a Baldwin? Like a... I have no idea. Why Why Hollywood stopped hiring him? Oh, God. I don't think, I don't think he is. Yeah, he's not. He's not. He's not here. No. Did you ever... We were doing this uh, the other week. What? Did you ever look up a famous person? Go to Wikipedia and just see if there's a controversies and like yeah the controversies yeah there. just straight away I'm like oh what did they do they're always they're very very funny did it with Robert De Niro really yeah Robert De Niro doesn't Robert De Niro's is just like tax fraud and stuff like that it's like ah oh, that's not too bad that's right like, <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. get I can get behind that like tax fraud <laughs> that's that's always the accountants as well and like property tax and stuff like that evasion whatever it's like that's fine legal issues yeah sued for its property this is like you fall asleep reading this yeah no yeah it's like I don't care for shit as long as I don't see like the word like as long as I don't see like sexual abuse like pedophilia blue, yeah, yeah. or like murder <laughs> so I'm like I don't really give a shit yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can go away with robbery don't give a shit about that but you know if, if it's harm to an individual then I got a problem with that yeah that is an issue Robinson followed claiming harassment gender discrimination Oops. Oh well. <laughs> Cancelled. I'm never watching a Bob Dylan. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, oh yeah, it's like racism. It's like a fuck. Uh, <laughs> no. I gotta always get the good ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I see something in blue, I'm just like, oh god, what is it? It's like, okay, it's not that bad. But I then do not see. Other times, it's like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing worse. Nothing worse. But there's a there's a lot of things. There's are there are a lot of things worse than Predator Two. It's a grand film that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got a weird fucking opening though. I think just a fucking shootout, like a yeah, huge shootout. It was, it was really intense because I, I I turned it on. I hadn't like adjusted the the, the Chromecast. It, like automatically has the, the volume at like a max mm-hmm. volume, and it's so hard to turn it. You get to turn yeah, on your yeah. phone and go into the app and yeah, then go and click because you through. can't. Because man, I remember you used to be you used to be able to like turn it down on your phone just by like hitting yeah, the button. Yeah, yeah. They got rid of that. It doesn't work. Some yeah, yeah. So it was just like, it was just this massive shootout blaring in my room. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just as soon as, uh, as soon as I was home from work. Um, and it was, it was very traumatic. I had to, I had to turn it down. But I think it's a good cold open. It's, it's a good way to like set the tone. Mm. You know, it's like, and it's, it's proper like, it's like, it's like gritty and it's like violent and it's like everyone's sweating oh, balls, was, you know. But there's, a, there's a bit where like, um, Danny Glover is walking through a cemetery and I've never seen someone glisten with sweat so much in my entire life. Yeah, do you think they do that? Well, obviously, they, 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 it's like, what, what do they put on them? Just dumped water over his head and said, like, get out there, Danny. <laughs> yeah, it's like o- oil. Uh, like, what, like, it what must be like... Some oil or something. Oil or yeah, something yeah. like that. That must be horrible to work oh, in. Oh, I say so. Yeah. It's, it's, I've, it looks uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how they do that. Mm. It must be the millions of dollars. Yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> the there. end of the rainbow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Worth it for sure. Aye, aye. Did you watch anything decent this week? I watched Crimes of the Future by David Cronenberg. Oh, that's a, that's his new one. It's a new film. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's his it's first foray into the sci-fi horror genre since existence of 1999. It's been 24 years since he, he went into, or 23 years. He just came out during the summer. Uh, Crimes of the Future is a film that stars Viggo Mortensen, Christian Stewart, and um, Leia Seydoux. You know her. What's she in? She's the French girl. She's in. She's in Bond. She was in that. Remember that film? Blue is the warmest color. That film. Oh, yeah. like I know the two actors in that, but I yeah. don't know if I've ever seen them in anything. Oh, she's in loads of stuff now. Um, yeah, Lace to do. Um, it's full of loads of random people, like really famous people. 
It's actually it's it's ripped off, or the name is ripped off from a short film that he did in the eighties. They have no relation whatsoever. I don't know why he, he reused the same name. It's a good name. It's a, it Crimes of the Future. Crimes what does that mean? It's, it's kind of like it's like evocative, yeah. in like a like an uninteresting way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a good, like a, a dime novel from like the sixties. Yeah, 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 yeah. Philip K. Dick's fr- Crimes of the Future. Um, but yeah, so it's about a uh, performance artist who performs surgery to audiences. Um, in that a future world, sounds Cronenberg. Kron- Cronenbergian, yeah. yeah. In a future world where human evolution has accelerated for particular individuals, so it's about uh, Viggo Mortensen. He's like this guy who's, who's uh, his body has a, uh, like, evolved the ability to generate new, like, novel organs, which are like apparently useless. So to keep himself alive. How would evolution do that? <laughs> I have no idea. Well, like, that's kind of how it works. Like, mutants, you know? Mutants, like, absolute freaks. Mm. Uh, but then the freaks be... Um, their freakishness becomes an advantageous quality based on, like, the way it fits into the environment. Mm. Um, so, like... Uh, yeah, I suppose, like, not everything is efficient. Yeah, yeah. So, every one, for every one freak, you have a hundred other freaks mm. who were just who were just freaks that just died because, like, they were, like, whatever mutation they had. Yeah, it just, just didn't survive. Yeah, it just didn't work. Um yeah, I don't know. But anyway, that's the premise. And uh, so to survive, to keep himself alive, he has to like constantly like perform surgery or have surgery performed on him to remove the extraneous organs. And then it's about it's 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 actually kind of like it's 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 really weird, obviously. Mm-hmm. And it's about uh, there's this other kind of it's like a it's not the B plot, so like they kind of inter inter interweave at one point. But it, the film starts out with this kid who can like eat plastic. You know, he can eat plastic. He can like spit on like he, he, it. Show it starts with him. He's spitting into a bucket and it's like dissolving, and then he eats it. He, he's eating the bucket, and then his mom comes over and suffocates him because he's like a freak of nature or whatever. And then the rest of the film is kind of about, um, you know, dealing with like what does that mean? What does that mean that like you know new, new evolution? What was what is it? What does mean it mean to, mean to evolve? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like eating plastic. There's like a there's like a crew of cannibalistic plastic eaters centered around the father of the plastic-eating son, who is now dead, and Viggo Mortensen is being asked by the dad of the son to perform a an autopsy art performance um, on, the, on the child um, to, like, make a statement or something mm-hmm. like that, um, which is really fucked up. Because, um, like, they show the dead kid and stuff. I was like, oh, Jesus, that's a bit... It's didn't grim. Th- didn't think they go there. He's in a fridge and all. Uh, and then there's this whole other thing. Obviously, it's Cronenberg. So there's this whole other thing about sex. Yeah, <laughs> of course there is. Uh, Kristen Stewart is like really horny for Viggo Mortensen. Uh, specifically, Fair. his like gash, like his stoma, like his, oh, uh, his vagina. Is his, his, his yeah? Like there's there's a there's a scene where Leia Sadu eats out Viggo Mortensen's stomach vagina, and it's re- she like he has a zipper. At one point, sick. And she opens up the zipper and just goes to town on his like his his neo vagina, uh, and it's like absolutely disgusting. But the whole thing is about how uh, it's like uh, surgery is the new sex, mm. um, you know, something like that. But it's like the the humans have like socially, like biologically evolved into these new weird like, straying off in these different parts which aren't strictly human, uh, socially, um. That kind of idea of sex, they're like how they, um, like the social aspect of, of sex is like a as a in that mode rather than like a reproductive thing, um, as like an exploratory, like a, mm. a kind of play or whatever, like um, mu- mutual pr- pleasure. That's like been fucking transplanted into like cutting, mm. like the act of cutting and mutilation, oh, and that's um, it's really, yeah, it's really, it's really weird, but it's like r- it's very clinical. It's not like there's a lot of people sitting around cutting themselves with like you know razors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all like it's like like actual surgical procedures. And Kristen Stewart is mad horny. She's like a she's like a she's some kind of nurse, and she's trying to look after or study Viggo Mortensen. And she's really getting she's really getting into this space where she can she's attracted to his persona as like this mysterious art performance guy who's also like you know this this avatar of the next step of human evolution wherever that is going. Um, and she's becoming like increasingly attracted in like a really bizarre way. And she tries to have sex with him and stuff, and he's is like it oh. disturbing. It's 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 kind of disturbing. It's kind of funny as well. It's mm. ca- it's not really it's not that disturbing. 
It's it is fuck. Like, if if you know Cronenberg, you like it. Yeah, <clears throat> um, and you won't be that disturbed by it because other like there's much weirder shit. Like the video drama, I'd say, is a lot more disturbing than this. In terms oh yeah. Of, like, all that weird stuff about you know the the uh, you know um, human trafficking, fucking sex, <laughs> sex slave TV channel and stuff like that. Uh, um, video drama's pretty fucking grim. It is pretty grim. Uh, and the the the, the there's, there's I also forgot yeah Max yeah, Max Ryan has, has, has well. the song for Johnny in that as well yeah <laughs> <laughs> which is way weirder than the one in this film because this one has like really good effects this one so it's not this one's creepy. got a zipper <laughs> yeah he's got a zipper it's kind of it's a bit cleaner um the gore is quite kind of like clinical it's it's like it's it's, it's very surgical and it's mm. gore it's not it's not like it's not like a kind of a gross out thing like I could watch it fine I, I'm not really I don't really like yeah you gore don't like films. gore so I don't like gore films um uh, but it is it's a pretty freaky film. Um, and I've only watched it once, so I'm not really sure what to think about it. It's it's kind of kind of the way like video drum. You watch it, you're not sure what to think about it, but there's something. It's a vo- it's, it's it's setting sparks off, and you're like, what the fuck does that mean? You know, it's kind of evocative in that way. Not as good as video drum, though, obviously. Um, but it's more interesting than a lot of the stuff he's been putting out for like the last twenty years. Yeah, because I don't really know what has he done in the past twenty years. Uh, Cosmopolis, History of Violence, Map to the Stars. A bunch of films I've never heard of. Yeah, like they're not they're not sci fi, they're not horror. They're kind of like, um, like surrealist. Well, like history of violence is just kind of like a thriller. Um, mm. but they're just kind of surrealist films. Because I kind of forget that Cronenberg still makes films because it's like the mm. heyday was like the eighties and nineties for him, and they just kind of stopped. Seventies, I think, as well, maybe. Um, yeah, yeah. But like, but yeah, he had like thirty years of like making just. Bangers, yeah, just just like print and bangers, yeah. And then I just forget that he made films in the two thousands and twenty tens. Yeah, it is weird because he was turning them out at like a serious pace in the eighties and late seventies. But um, yeah, it's it's like once every five six years now, and um, and like he still has it. Mm. But uh, maybe he should like, you know, be a, a bit like video drama is really cool for how like raw it is, like all the ideas that are packed in there. Because mm-hmm. you have like the earlier stuff like Scanners and like Rabid. Which are like more kind of tropey, um, conventional horror films. I've still never seen. I think the only Cronenberg films I've seen are Crash, Videodrome, The Fly. Mm. Have I seen another one? I think I have. I think I so I haven't never seen Scanners and I haven't seen Rabbit yet. Yeah, yeah. Or The Brood. I haven't seen that either. Yeah, they're very basic. Like they're, they're, well, they're not very like they're good horror films, but there's nothing crazy. Like mm. there's nothing. They're not all timers. They're just yeah. they're just good. Like they're not The Fly. Like they're not Videodrome. Yeah, like The Fly is like. It's good. It's like it's like uh, transcending. Yeah. The genre nearly, you know. It's very, 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 very tight, very like perfectly made. You know, that's that's the pinnacle of the genre, in my opinion. Video drama is just like a mess of ideas, mm-hmm. but all the ideas are clearly like they seem to be going somewhere. It's like a, it's like a young director, like I think he was mid thirties when he made it. Mm. It's like he's like this guy's going somewhere, but like then like um, like all his other stuff doesn't really. Uh, it, do, it doesn't resolve it doesn't resolve in the way that maybe could like Crimes of the Future just seems it's it's scatterbrained the same way that like video drama is mm, yeah. but like not it's not as like it's not as interesting really yeah I don't know maybe maybe that's an unpopular opinion but that's just my opinion no I've heard s- similar things as well yeah um, like some people that I don't have seen it but I was like yeah it's alright yeah it's good like but it's nothing um, it's not groundbreaking yeah um, so maybe he should be a bit clearer <laughs> Or just, I don't know. Yeah, like I, I'm, I'm not one to tell the man how to make his films. But maybe he should cop the. Maybe, fuck maybe he should listen to me. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you should listen to Mark <laughs> exclusively. <laughs> you see what you do with video gnome. Just do that again, but better. Do, do that again, but uh, yeah, just be clear. Just you know more, what I mean? Yeah, just make more y- sense. You know bro. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was our problem with Crash as well, though. It's like Crash. Yeah, it's Crash. Like, I don't really know what the fuck you're going for here, bro. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, a Crash. You could kind of. Yeah. Like, Crimes of the Future is almost like a combination of Crash and Videodrome. That makes sense, yeah. And that, like, yeah, because Crash is all about that kind of derangement of the senses between, like, like sex and violence. Yeah. Um, and Videodrome is kind of similar, but way more sci-fi. And Cri- Crimes of the Future is kind of in between. Mm. You know, it's very... It's basically those two things, those two like, stuff. crash together, like, yeah. collided together. A car crash of film. Yeah, well, it's not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, car crash of ideas. Yeah. I feel, yeah, well, that was a shit crass joke, sorry. <laughs> Listen, I can't always have good jokes. Not all, um, not everything I say can be funny. <laughs> Just that's like that's not head. true, on Bangers, I, you you were you were actually cracking out bangers all day. Or <laughs> the first 50 minutes of this part, 
I was crying <laughs> laughing the first 20 minutes of this. I listen, was crying listen, laughing. Listen, I'm just retelling stories of what funny shit other people did. <laughs> <laughs> I myself cannot be funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Look at you. The, um, yeah, the Cronenberg. Cronenberg. You know, there's, excuse me, there's a, I always feel a bit like um, disappointed in when you see a director, you know, that you've seen do fucking banging shit and mm. then like you know they come out with stuff and it's like ah it's like a rehash of something that you've already kind of done but it's not as good it doesn't really elaborate yeah yeah and like no and you know I'm not trying to make a segue or whatever I watched uh, Scorsese's Casino this week um, completely unrelated <laughs> to that point <laughs> anyway off topic <laughs> yeah, completely <laughs> off topic um, have you seen Casino I have not Casino is like Goodfellas but worse Casino's 90 what Five, yeah, six, seven, something yeah. like that. See, I've heard of Casino, <laughs> but I've never actually, I've never, I, I've heard of the name. I've never really heard it. Like, I don't know the references. I don't know what it's about, really. It's about um. I think I remember the DVD in Extra Vision, like that kind of film. I think my like it's like a it, okay, like Casino is a good film, but I had rewatched Goodfellas like a, like in the past few months, and what a film. Oh, Goodfellas is just like it probably is just the best gangster film yeah, of all time it's so good it's so fucking good um, yeah Goodfellas is definitely my favourite Scorsese film yeah yeah I'm saying that now I'm trying to rack through my brain what else he's made prefer to yeah I prefer to The Last Ambition of Christ Wolf oh, of yeah, Wall Street yeah, definitely yeah um, The Irishman yeah I prefer to Taxi Irishman. Driver oh Taxi Driver is so good, man. Wait, maybe... Um, I, no, I think I prefer Taxi Driver, actually. Yeah. They're both totally different films. They're very different films. What's great about them. Um, <clears throat> I've never seen Cape Fear or... Cape Fear is not very good, I have to say. Um, it's alright. Yeah, I kind of got that vibe. Yeah. I think this came out... This came out after Cape Fear. Um, mm. So I think he did Goodfellas, then he did Cape Fear, and then he did Casino. But, like... Like Casino has De Niro and it has um, Joe Joe, Joe Pesci. Pesci. Mm. Um, I was gonna say Pacino. It's Pacino is just coming out of my mouth. I was trying to stop him from from saying it. Joe Pacino. Uh, Joe Pacino. <laughs> um, but it's like it has like the monologue. Like I always wanted to be a gangster. It's like it has that running throughout the film, mm. but it has Joe Pesci and De Niro both doing it, mm. being like. Oh yeah, when things are at the top, we were doing this, 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 and this guy was a fucking pussy, so we had to whack him and stuff like that. Mm. It's about um, it's about you know Las Vegas and Las Vegas being like this place where gangsters can go and legitimately just make money. Um, mm. like true legitimate means like they can you know legitimate, but like you know more legitimate ways. There's a line where Joe Pesci's like um. De Niro's like, you need to calm down with all this gangster shit. And Joe Pesci's <laughs> like, we're in Las Vegas. Like, that's what this place was made for. Yeah. Uh, yeah like, yeah. that's the point of this place is like, uh-huh. that's what it's here for. Money laundering. Money laundering. And like, so they get, uh, De Niro is like hired by like the mafia basically to go in and run a casino for them. Mm. And he's like going in and out. Like, the first hour is just him like explaining like how he runs the casino and stuff like that. And then Joe Pesci's character shows up and he's just a full on gangster. Like, just trying to he think he starts um he gets a little gang of mates and they start like robbing places and pulling off heists mm. and then De Niro's wife is a I don't know what exactly the term would be but basically she's like a, a woman that like brings in clients to like casinos and like shows them a good time and stuff like that okay like um and just like like bring them off to like the fancy places and they pay for everything that she wants and gets her like jewelry and stuff like that just so they can like you know look rich and stuff like that mm. um and then she starts to kind of lose it with De Niro and it's like trying to rob him it's with the kid trying to get the kid away from him and Joe Pesci's involved and that whole story is just not as interesting and it takes up like that's what basically what the film is in mm. the end is the majority of it is about De Niro and his wife and Joe Pesci and her trying to take the kids and so, like, it moves away from the Las Vegas stuff and the mafia yeah. stuff to turn on to that and that's just not as interesting. Yeah, yeah. Because um, yeah. like I guess like any of that stuff that is interesting, it's very reminiscent of Goodfellas. Mm. 
So you're just like, oh, okay. It's like, it's a, it's still a very good film, but it is also three hours long. Um, what what made you watch this film? I just it was on, is it on Netflix? I think it was on Netflix. It was on something, mm. and I just knocked it on, um, because I wanted to watch it because it's like oh, Scorsese, sure. Yeah, very famous film. Like very famous film. It's Scorsese. I'm like. I don't know why I didn't knock on any of his other shorter films. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, I chose to watch Casino and I was like, that was perfect. Like, you know, it's a very good three star film. <laughs> Same a star rating for every hour. A star for every <laughs> hour, yeah. Same rating as Predator 2. <laughs> That's not great, is it? No. Yeah. Um, it's, not, it's not terribly well renowned. It, and like... I can kind of see why, but, like, I always see... Maybe it's just, like, film, bro, TikTok or something that, like, I get the odd TikTok from, like, Casino comes up quite a bit. Mm. Um, But it's just not very good. But, like, it is. It's, like, it's Scorsese film. Like, it's super well-crafted. Yeah. But, like, I want something more from my films, you know? The film's critical profile has increased in years after its release. Has there been ever been an example of a film whose critical profile has dropped... Gone with the wind, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I suppose, yeah. <laughs> Although, that's... Uh, Birth of a Nation. Birth of a Nation. <laughs> there you go, that's the answer. Any Lenny Re- Riefenstahl film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's just... <laughs> this like the Wikipedia entry is like, the critical uh, reception of uh, Triumph of the Will has dropped considerably <laughs> in the years since its release. <laughs> <laughs> it's been glamorous as a, as a propaganda film. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a good, it's kind of disappointing. I will know to avoid it, though. Yeah, it's not even one that I'd say, like, avoid at all costs. Uh, yeah, but, like, I, d- I can't see, like... It's a perfect Sunday movie to have on in the background. Oh, okay, okay. But, the, like, it's the, also three hours. The perfect hours. Sunday movie. No, it's not. It's, like, the perfect Sunday movie. No, it's not. But, you, you know... Yeah, we would have it on the background, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those films that, like, you have on the background throughout the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, It's grand. Yeah. It's a mind blown. It's, like... It's the kind of thing you watch on film for your dad would watch a film for on like yeah, and your dad a Sunday said, night before and, yeah, and your dad would be like, This is one of the greatest films ever made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you'd be like, I wanna go to bed I two hours in. Oh, no, stay stay watch this. Yeah. And I was like at the end it's like, Dad, that was only all right and he's like, Yeah, it was, wasn't <laughs> it? <laughs> You turn around, your dad falls asleep on the couch. Yeah, yeah the, <laughs> this is a film that your dad said you need to watch this, and he'd fall asleep on the couch while watching. That's what this film is. <laughs> I'm gonna blame because it it's three hours. <laughs> oh, that's a great description. Yeah, no, but uh, yeah, it's it's a real dad movie, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dadcore. Dad, yeah, casino. Because Goodfellas isn't dadcore. We should make a dadcore list. Yeah, we should. What'll be on that list? Uh, casino, Casino, Predator. A lot of our films, to be fair. A lot of our films, a lot of our films are pretty dark or, Um Once uh, upon a time in in America. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. dark or. Um The good, the bad, and the ugly. Point Break, um, Speed. There's so I'm I have like vague recollections of like war movies. Apocalypse Now, yeah. But no, nah, not even no. That's too high class of a war movie. Like <laughs> some like Platoon. Yeah, Platoon. I'm just picturing like das cowboys boot. shooting each other and stuff like that. Like old Western films that you'd never know the fucking name of. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. Just, they're just on, on Sky. No, it's not even Sky. It's like yeah. gold or something like that. <laughs> yeah. it's, on, you know? it's on Dave. Yeah, it's on Dave. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> what is this it's channel? It's fucking <laughs> terrible quality as well. Yeah. It's oversaturated the bits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. Darkcore. Yeah, Darkcore is a solid genre to be nah, fair. It, it is. It's like generally they're there for a reason. Um what's that a John Wayne films generally are yeah, John Wayne films but they're nearly grand darkcore at this thing. <laughs> <laughs> grand darkcore. <laughs> <laughs> what would be in the grand darkcore list? John Wayne films, Just Gone with the Wind. John Wayne. <laughs> yeah. uh, dear. Um, something like the flyer as well, just to throw it in. It's the, the most flyer. modern film. Core. <laughs> <laughs> Braveheart is dad core. Braveheart is serious dad core film. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, Apocalypto. Oh, apo- yeah, Apocalypto is serious dad core. Any yeah. Mel Gibson film? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mad Max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Original Mad Max. Originally, yeah, yeah. but then no Mad distinction Max. between them. 
No, but like, the thing about the, like Mel Gibson films is that like you're you're just like oh that way you're watching this and he's like you never your dad isn't, isn't even aware that Mel Gibson has done anything yeah, wrong. Just look at the action. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good film. <laughs> um, you watched Interstellar. I did, yeah. Which like I well, I did I rewatched Interstellar. Mm. Interstellar is one of these films where like every few months I'm like I need to rewatch Interstellar even you though know, I've seen it, like four times. You know what? I rewatched Interstellar. Maybe I've watched it. This is probably the third time I ever watched it. Um, I think I've seen this one three times as well, maybe four. I actually I watched it in one sitting. It's nearly three hours long. I watched it in one sitting. Yeah, it, it flies by. To be fair. Yeah, yeah. I watched it. It was the I just come home from work and I stuck it on. I just about finished it before I got to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Solid. Well, I, I didn't think I'd finish it. But I was like, I kind of have to. I stayed up. At, I didn't stick it on straight away. I just made my dinner and I sat down. And I put it on. I was like, I'm not gonna be able to finish this because because uh, it's 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 gonna run over past my bedtime. Yeah, gotta get into bed on time. I had to I had to get it's to bed. Very time. important. Otherwise, I start worrying and then I don't sleep. But alas, this film I couldn't stop watching it. I was like, I can't go to bed now. It's like, like Murph, Murph, Murph. That scene is very Murph. good. When he's yeah. crying. Honestly, I, I I realized I didn't really understand it just the first time, the first two times <laughs> I watched it. <laughs> I didn't really get it. Um, that whole shit about the four D being the five D being. Sorry. Um, Are they four or fifth? No, they're five D. Oh shit! So they they they're four they're five dimensional beings who create a four dimensional space called the tesseract at the end of the film. Um, I also I didn't realize that like, rust rust. <laughs> I didn't realize that. <laughs> well, it is, to be fair. It's just rust. <laughs> I didn't realize that... Uh, what's his name? <laughs> Matthew it's McConaughey goes in... <laughs> I have to give it the character's name. It's got a fucking clue. No, I don't know what the character's name is. What, what is his name? Is it like Marty or something? Yeah? It's just, uh, the true detective. Uh, I didn't realize the true detective actually goes through the black hole. Yeah. Like He falls into the event horizon. Oh, yeah, he goes straight in. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Or I, I'd either, Coop. I, Coop, yeah. He, he'd... Fr- it's a, that's like Rust and Coop are the same name. Like it is, they're yeah. both like nonsense fucking Midwestern American <laughs> names. <laughs> no one's called that in real life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, Coop goes into the black hole, and then he, fi- he he finds himself in a four dimensional tesseract, which has been constructed by the five dimensional beings who conceive of time as another um, plane of like space. Mm-hmm. You know, so they can see the past and the future they can feel the past the past and the future mm-hmm. and be in the past and future at the same time you know um, and so they created the space for rust to create a causal loop for him like to be able to initiate him initiate his daughter figuring out yeah the to way f- to do the whole thing the ending is dog shit i have to admit that I f- the my ending is so so I bad i fucking hate the third act it's so well, the, well not the third act. i mean like well the, the part at the end like when he's in the after the test act yeah, yeah. When he gets back home, and he's like, "Murph is a little, was a granny." And Mur- Murph is dying. You done good, kid. You done good, girl. <laughs> and she passes away, and then he's like, "I gotta go save, uh, fucking your one, your one, <laughs> <laughs> whatever your one's name is." <laughs> yeah. Um, what the fuck is her name? Uh, I actually can't. I can't remember. Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway. I have to go save Anne Hathaway. And so he rockets off. Maybe back. We'll find it's, it's like, <laughs> would you not take a fucking rest? Take a minute. Well, it's, that, that whole part is just stupid. I'm, I'm going to pretend that part isn't part of the film. Mm. The rest of the film is really good. I don't like... Really good. All right, first two thirds of the film, I'm like, yeah. oh, banging. Mm. Even though the dialogue is a bit clunky. Thump, I'll get, it is. It really is. It I is. didn't notice that before. I, n- I never noticed it until I watched it re- like the most recent watch. I was like, man, this dialogue is clunky. Yeah, it's like Russ is like having like a, a meeting, like a parent-teacher meeting, and the parent's like, Rust? I keep calling Rust. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 teacher, the teacher's like, Coop, you know that the world uh, uh, destroyed itself 10 years ago, yeah, and yeah, that yeah. now that we have nothing left, and your son has to be a farmer because we have no farms... Like you, it's would, like, you wouldn't say that on a parent teacher meeting. It's the most like shoveling uh, exposition, exposition yeah. ever. Oh my god, exposition it's a, city in the first. The hour. first, yeah, literally every every fucking conversation of the first act is just exposition. Yeah, yeah. Then that second half hits, or that second, like once he gets into space, top banging. Tops. Second act of this film is class. Yeah, yeah. And then the third act, I don't like because I don't like the. The only thing that can transcend space and time is love. 
Yeah. 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 For, and like normally I do like stuff like that. Like I like the idea of like love and connecting with people. You Man, know. that's just everything everywhere all at once. It's the same thing. Yeah, whatever. whatever. It's, it's the same thing. It is the same thing. It is the same thing. It is exactly the same thing. It is exactly the same thing. But 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 everything everywhere does in terms of like the monotony of everyday life mm. and like being like you know no matter you know you could live other lives and stuff like that but just to connect it to the people that you actually do love and whatever. But Interstellar is like yeah we can save the universe because of love. Yeah. <laughs> We can yeah. save space and time because love. I think. I think it honestly. Maybe this is me projecting, but I feel like it's more just a clunky way. It's Nolan's like robotic trying fucking, to have a heart. His, <laughs> it's yeah, a Tin Man. It's his. It's yeah. It's his Tin Man autistic robot heart trying to like be a uh, like trying to communicate. Must have emotion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because it, the whole because you know he's known for being like this fucking you know he's like he's like. It's, it's his films are robotic, clinical to uh, to a fault. You mm. know, very detail oriented. Even this film, it was co-written by is it Cape Thorne? It's someone with a ridiculous name like that. He's like he's like a nuclear <laughs> it's a ridiculous name. Cape <laughs> <laughs> Thorne. Yeah, yeah. He's like he's a nuclear physicist. Rustin Cooper. He was a uh, <laughs> yeah, and he's like a he's like a, like an actual he like he worked with Stephen Hawking. I think on like, like black holes. Yeah, and stuff like that. So he helped write the. Film. It's very scientifically accurate. Apparently, obviously within the realms of science fiction, uh-huh. it's like the whole wormhole thing isn't obviously confirmed. Um, so it's like it's just like a hyper. Like realistic to the extent that science fiction can be realistic, like hard sci fi yeah. film, but at the same time, it's like I see that whole like you know, love can tra- transcend time and space. It's a clunky way of like, of like, like the Trojan horse of getting in there, getting inside this like, this like cold outer hard sci fi shell and getting in there and being like, oh no, it's like because the film, it's because there's, there's loads of other stuff in the film that isn't just it's like it's not just Anne Hathaway saying. Oh, I'm horny for your man. Oh, I'm horny for Miller. I need my hole. Or what? Yeah, I need my hole. <laughs> I'm going down to that planet. Or do you like her or not? Uh, Muller, whatever her like fella's name is. Matt Damon. Um, Matt not Damon. The other guy. Just Matt oh, Damon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Matt He's Damon isn't... The th- yeah, the third planet. She wants to go down to him. Because um, she has a feeling. She has like a, a feeling in the back of her head. Um, but there's like... It's not just... She didn't just think that and like come out with this line out of nowhere. There was a lot of stuff previous in the film Oh, is it, it, which isn't terribly well established or obvious, but there there is this kind of idea that um, you know there is some kind of link. Love is like this like plane of reality, like the fourth dimension is love. Yeah, something like that. Well, more like that. Um, you know, <coughs> the way these fifth dimensional beings, <coughs> um, kind of you know chose Coop and chose his daughter and like kind of uh, orchestrated circumstances in a way. That uh, they create this causal loop, mm-hmm. which you know saves humanity. The same kind of way, the same kind of process is what kind of drove Anne Hathaway to go look for a fella. Mm-hmm. The same thing, which kind of like you know that everything happens for a reason. That there is some kind of like you know not higher power, but some kind of like broader guiding Causality force. Or like that. Yeah, yeah, some broader guiding force beyond anything that we can conceive or even like uh, can can see or touch or like you know like the tesseract. It's only it's only a uh, a condensation. Um, of the fifth dimension that is tailored so that Coop can't imagine it, you know yeah, all that sort, yeah. of, sort of sci-fi stuff. But like so, but yeah, the love transcending time and space—it's terrible, terrible dialogue. It's really stupid. But I think it's just—it's a very poorly um, written summation of a. It's a robotic summation of a kind of like more tender, softer theme, which the film is trying to go for, but which it can't really express properly mm-hmm. because. It has fucking the Tin Man directing it. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> like if Kubrick tried to make a film about love. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, um, yeah, um, so you know, it's it 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 means really well, um, and it it doesn't it doesn't pay off very well. It's very earnest. Mm. I like I like how earnest it is, um, and there is stuff that which I, I you, like. It's hard to kind of give it credit for the first time you watch it, but there's like a little hit, like the whole like the you know the whole idea of some broader guiding force is like present throughout the film mm-hmm. um, and you kind of have to watch it again to see that or I did anyway um, I didn't really catch that the first two times I, I didn't really fully understand the film the first two times I watched it <laughs> <laughs> so I had to watch it the third time and now I'm like oh yeah yeah I like it but that that last part the last 15-20 minutes dog shit I don't know why I put that in it's so sweet and 
tweet. Yeah, they should have just left sweet. it. Yeah, they should have just left it. It's like uh, Coop gets back to Earth. Well, he doesn't even get back to Earth. He, you know, flies back through the wormhole, and you see Earth. Uh, maybe you see out of nowhere. You see like maybe a fucking one of those those huge, the big spinny space station thing, mm-hmm. which which Murph has built, has helped build. And then you're like, oh, you know, rather than a full kind of like, oh, we don't need to hear your fucking life story. I don't care what happened to Murph. Like I don't care yeah. about any of these things. I I nearly would prefer if it just kind of like if it ended in a way. Oh, I'm even just trying to think. Like, what a, way would have been a bit more ambiguous? No, I don't even need ambiguity. Just like, I just don't want it to be so fucking twee. I just don't need to have that conversation with Murph. Yeah, yeah, because it accomplishes thematically in terms of what we're talking about here. Like the the bone people have to pick with this film is over the, the whole love thing, mm-hmm. um, and that's just like a a, a very poorly done um, kind of wrap up of a theme which has been running throughout the entire film I feel like they wrap up all those themes everything is done everything is tied up in a bow thematically yeah. which is all we care about because the characters themselves aren't like that interesting really no, we don't really care what happens like we care but like it's not really the point of the film no. it's a cosmic film um, so, but the, the last 50 minutes are just dedicated to Murph and Coop Coop he's the main character fair enough we need some kind of resolution there or some like some kind of semi-resolution Murph I don't know about everyone else I don't, I don't really care what happened to Murph I really don't care. I feel like as well, like, the whole thing, like, love transcends, transcends space and time kind of falters a little bit when you have them have that conversation because, like, it should have been, like, no, he knew, the, like, he had that feeling in the back of his head and she did as well. They never had to have that face, that face-to-face confirmation to confirm, oh, you knew that, you know that I love you and you know that all that, that they just, they knew that they mm. loved each other. Yeah. Because love transcends space and time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. W- I feel like something like that would have been a little bit better than having a conversation where Murph is like, I've had my life, Dad. You can go off and live yours now. Yeah. I've had a beautiful life and I knew that you loved me. Thanks, Dad, for saving the world. I didn't need that. Yeah. I also really didn't need the, I'm off on my next adventure to go find Dan Hathaway. I don't need that either. <laughs> yeah, it's like, why? I don't give a shit. <laughs> Just retire, man, yeah. <clears throat> She's gone, bro. <laughs> <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, very clunkily done film. Yeah, but, but a very time, good one. Admirable. Mm. Same way Prometheus is admirable, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but obviously totally fails in many ways. Yeah. It's still stunning. Oh, it's insanely, insanely Such well a good done. looking film. So, yeah, it's so, so good. Mad Bass and growing a whole ass cornfield as well. Huh? You know, he does, he grew the, that whole cornfield just to drive the truck through it. Did he? Yeah, Nolan. He's like, oh, it's actually cheaper to... Because then I could sell the corn afterwards, so it turned out to be cheaper <laughs> than making CGI, so we just grew a cornfield just to drive a fucking <laughs> truck through it. <laughs> that's great. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's that's real filmmaking there. He did the same thing with... Um, um, he does it. What was that new yeah. one? Tenet. Tenet, yeah. He did the same thing there. Where he was he like, actually drove the cars backwards. No, he didn't. No, he, he actually a, traveled back through <laughs> time. <laughs> <He drove> back <laughs> to, <laughs> it's it's cheaper to do that way. <laughs> this is cheaper if we just develop this new technology. There's interstellar is no there's actually no CGI in Interstellar man. We actually found it's cheaper just to go up into space. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh there's a bit in in Tenet where he gets um a Boeing seventeen forty seven to like crash into a building. And like on it's like rolling. It's yeah, yeah, the hangar, yeah. The hangar, yeah. He was he said that it was actually just cheaper just to buy one and crash it than to do CGI. Which I can't believe that that's true. Yeah, how is that true? Um and then for Oppenheimer, I think he made He actually dropped the nuclear bomb. I know, apparently he made like the biggest like dynamite explosion ever recorded or something like that. Jesus. Something like that. Yeah. I saw a meme that said it was the most like most uh, dynamite ever exploded, so I believe it. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't Google it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> you actually recreated the Nagasaki Hiroshima bombs. <laughs> it's actually cheaper. It's actually cheaper just to build a bomb <laughs> and nuke, n- nuke it off in the middle of nowhere. And it didn't violate any treaties because it was for a movie. <laughs> yeah, it's, for, it's actually for a movie. Uh, that'd be a good film, mm. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm, yeah... I kind of don't care about it though. I don't know if I care about that film yeah, either, but I'm still looking it. forward to it. Mm. I want to see it in IMAX. Yeah, no, it it's a reason good. to go to the cinema. Like a nuclear bomb, like spectacle, pure yeah. spectacle. 
you know that's what you want that's, terrifying that's why spectacle you, yeah that's why you go like, you, you wouldn't watch that on your phone, on like your, your phone you know it's in black and white as well is it uh, oh, stop but imagine like when the bomb is goes off it's going to be in colour whoa that, that would be cool that would be I wh- guarantee you that's what, how it's going to happen why is it in black and white like because it's in olden times <laughs> Didn't have colour back in 1940. I sw- I, honestly, it better the, the bomb better be in colour. Yeah, I think, no, I think it is. I think it is because the trailer has the bomb like this fiery red and then everything else is in black and white. Mm. Um, so I'm, f- I'm fairly certain that that's the way he's doing it. Oh, sh- yeah, surely. Black and white, come on, man. Man, if I see a what nuke in it? black and white, I'm going to fucking <laughs> snap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to demand my money back. <laughs> you just jump up in the theatre. I came here this for one fucking joke. I came here for one thing, one thing only. I wanted to see a nuke, and I'm not <laughs> see, all I'm seeing is black and white come at the screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I could have just watched the actual footage of the bomb going off. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, the re- like the actual bomb yeah. going off. Yeah. Why it's it's in black and white? I can't believe it. I mean, it should be beautifully shot and everything like that, but that nuke better be in color. Black and white films are so gimmicky; it's not even funny. So silly. Yeah, I only really accept black and white films now if they're old. <laughs> if I yeah. see a modern black and white film, I'm like, why? If they're actually shot in black and white, fair enough. If like you're doing it as like some kind of like statement, you're a cunt. It means your film is shit, <laughs> and that you needed. It's like it's like pure. It's like it's like the way Baz Luhrmann just uh, saturates everything. It's like you're doing this because you you know your film is dog shit, and you're trying to make <laughs> us forget that. You know. So yeah. you're, you're just trying to like. It's, I mean, it, I agree with that. I don't even like Baz Luhrmann. I've seen two Baz Luhrmann films. I didn't like either of them. Yeah, exactly. His films aren't that bad, but like, it, it's just like pure style for no, like for for n- no reason whatsoever. What Baz Luhrmann films have you seen? Uh, Great Gatsby, um, and I can't remember the other one. Have you seen Moulin Rouge? I have not. Is that the Romeo and Juliet? Yeah, Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, yeah I've seen that. I've seen that. Romeo and Juliet isn't that bad, but like, why is it like? Why is it ac? Why is it like I just think an it's accurate? Style. Yeah, it's, it's just painful. Pure, pure style. Yeah, it's just painful. I, d- I style. don't like. His, I don't like his style of filmmaking. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Like, the films aren't actually that bad. But why are you? Why are you being so like? Why are you doing that? Mm. <laughs> why are you doing that? <laughs> Stop that! <laughs> Stop doing that! It would be so much better without it. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, another sci-fi film. Before we get on to our recommended film, I watched. Strange Days. Ooh. Is it Strange Days or Stranger Days? No, I think it's Strange Days. Uh, this is Catherine Bigelow. Um, 1996? 97? Double check that. 95. Oh, fuck. 95. Uh, yeah, Strange Days. Catherine Bigelow. This is... Uh, what this film is, is it is a somewhat sci-fi film. Like, there's only one thing that's sci-fi about this film, and it's that people have the technology to record memories or, like, record what they're doing. They have this little thing that they stick onto their head, and they have a little, like, kind of sci-fi tape recorder, and they can record what they see and what they feel. Mm. So there's, like, a black market for people to experience, you know, the thrill of robbing a bank, of, like having sex like a threesome or like you know there's even a bit where like he's it's um oh my god what's the guy from grand budapest the main fella uh ralph Fiennes. yeah ralph Fiennes. he's young in it man he's really distracting because I've, I've only ever seen ralph Fiennes as like old old yeah. and seen him young i'm like this is so weird yeah, yeah he looks like he looks the same but just younger it's really <laughs> it's really fucking distracting <laughs> um but it's a bit where like he's trying to sell this idea to a guy, uh, and he's like, "You want to fuck that girl over there? You can fuck that girl. You can um, you can feel what that feels like. You want to fuck a dude? You can do that. If you want to feel what it, like what it's like to be a girl, I can make that happen as well. I can make all this shit happen. Whatever you want." Um, so it's like that's the kind of core concept. But then what happens is, is that he is sent a tape by uh, of a prostitute that you know is getting murdered, um, raped, and murdered from the killer's perspective and i'm just like conceptually this is the most fucked up thing i've ever fucking heard in a film where the murderer sticks um the murderer has like a two-way headpiece thing so he blindfolds the girl and sticks the headpiece on her so she can see him from his perspective of him raping her and can feel what he feels 
conceptually the most fucked up thing I have ever fucking heard in a film. Horrible. It's so disturbing. Um, and Jeez. there's like snuff bits in the film that are like that where it's from the killer's perspective like and Ralph Fiennes is like having the headpiece on he's seen all this shit. Horrible. Horrible. It's so fucked up. Um, so what happens is that this it's basically like a murder kind of thriller mystery sci-fi thing. Um, and for the first like this is like an hour no two hours nearly two and a half hours long. First like hour and 45 minutes is just solid like really good. And then the film shits the bed in the last 45 minutes. Like, what? oh, it's just like the guy that you thought was the killer the entire time turns out to be the killer. Um, earlier on in the film, it was like, oh, it's nice that there's this like a, ma- like a like a male protagonist with like a female sidekick and they're just fucking mates. Mm. And then at the end, for no reason, they kiss and it's like the happy ending. You're like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> like, it's like that. And I knew it was going to, the moment I knew it was going to happen was like, He's talking to her and he's just like, um, do you know what it feels like to fall in love with someone and for them to not reciprocate it back? And she looks at him and is like, I do. I was like, oh, no. Uh, no, don't go down this way. Ew. No. Um, has this bad taste in my mouth of a, of a not all cops message. Um, like this film was 100% inspired by the Rodney King riots like what happened basically like L- it's a set in it's in LA and it's like like the streets have gone to shit because the police are you know bad at their job and there's like riots and stuff like that like loads of police brutality there's like a, a really famous like black rapper gets killed and it turns out that he's executed by the police and uh, there's meant to be this idea of like, oh, maybe there's a death squad in the LAPD going around killing people. Mm. But it just turns out that that's a lie by the killer to like throw the main guy off the scent. He's like, he's like, you're an idiot if you think that all cops are bad, basically. He's like, there's there's only a few rogue cops that killed that guy. <laughs> Look, there's a going over there. Yeah. There's one. <laughs> Man, no, no, no. Like, literally, like, it's Ralph Fiennes, like, and his uh, sidekick is like, I can't remember her name, but, um, She's a uh, like she's a black woman, and he's just like take this, take this tape, like this evidence of the black guy getting executed by the police, and give it to that guy there. He's a good cop, <laughs> like they're li- he literally like he's a good cop, like he's one that we can trust. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, "Are you fucking stupid?" And he's like, "No, no, trust me, he's a good cop." Turns out he is a good cop. He believes her in the end, and like saves her from getting fucking executed by the police as well and it's like jesus fucking christ you're joking me (laughs) what 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 a legend like this whole like the film has like such an interesting plot for like a hundred like for like an hour and a half and then just doubles back on everything that had done previously Mm. and just like turns into like a yeah it's a really really good film for an hour and 45 minutes and then that last 45 minutes is just bad (laughs) yeah 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 it's the film's critical standing has improved over the years. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do understand many why. many fans feeling that the film has been overlooked by casual mass audience and misguided critics. I think, no, because when you're watching the first like bit, you're like, man, this is really good. Mm. Like, this is like surprisingly good because I've never heard of this film. Mm. And then the ending happens, which kind of undermines everything else. But <clears throat> first, like, hour and 45 minutes, very, very good. Yeah, it's written by James Cameron. Oh, yeah, yeah. And a guy called Jay Cox. But if you go into his Wikipedia profile, this guy's name is John Cox. So his name is Dick Cox. <laughs> a guy called Dick Cox and James Cameron. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> like, um, Captain Bigelow is, was, is or was married to James Cameron. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So apparently um, they got a hundred million... Space to make true story. to make two to make two films, mm. and it was meant to be split between them. But then James Cameron took like sixty or seventy million to make um, True Lies, and then gave the rest to Captain Piccolo to make this film. But when you're watching this, like this is a very good looking film. It's a good mm. good action. It's like I don't surprise he made it for, you know, less than fifty million. <laughs> yeah, it's huge box <clears throat> office bomb. Mm. Bombed. Didn't deserve it, man. It's a good Bombed film. Hard. Yeah, no, like it, well, you know, well, except for yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, based on what you're saying, it sounds pretty good. No, um, it is very good. Very over. I've never heard of this film. Yeah, I've never, never heard, heard of this. Robin film. recommended that I watch this. I was like, yeah, we'll watch this good for go. film club, and it was good. Yeah. It was a good film. Um, yeah, like it's, <clears throat> but it's not even like 
it's like such a little sci-fi like this it's like cl- classified as like a sci-fi mystery thriller mm. but like there's only one MacGuffin that's sci-fi and it's the fucking headpieces which is like central to the plot mm. but like like the cars are standard the guns everything is standard it's just mm. this one piece of tech that they have oh, right, yeah, which yeah. is like kind of interesting because it's like it's cool a slight little tweak on like reality, yeah it's you know? like just gonna happen well hopefully not hopefully not really Jeez. really hope not there's some awful well. stuff that happens in, in these like snuff bits but VR 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 snuff movies is basically what happens VR. yeah awful <laughs> awful Ugh. but um yeah no it's grand you know it's long as well. It's only two and a half hours long. Fuck that. Yeah. Uh, which is a bit of a slight against it. It's like, oh, so long. <laughs> Why? Why did they do that? so many long movies recently. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do that? This in Casino. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, Interstellar <clears throat> is long, but Crimes of the Future is not sure. How long is Crimes of the Future? It's a an hour and a half. Oh, a little an hour and a half long yeah, film. It's very. it's quite short, like. Well, all, all Cronenbergs are, are fairly short. To be yeah, fair. I don't think he really. I don't think he's ever made a film that's like over like two hours. Yeah, Video Drum's the same. Even though Video Drum feels way longer. I think Video Drum's like an hour forty-five. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, should we move on to our recommended film of the week? Do I take a break first? I was about to suggest that. Yeah, yeah. Let's take a break first. <laughs> I'm sleepy. <laughs> same. And now for our recommended film, SLC Punk. By James Marandino, a 1998 film. Not a 90s film on this episode. A serious man of 90s vibes. We are 90s babies, after all. We are all. 90s babies. 90s kids, as they say. Mm-hmm. Which means we're all now. <laughs> Which means we're all just fucked. I saw a TikTok of a guy saying like that some little kid asked him when he was born. Mm. And he's like, 1992. And the kid responded, oh, so like the late 20th century. <laughs> the late 20th century. No, yeah. the late 1900s. The late 1900s. Ah, you can't be saying that. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You'd be like, fuck off. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? The late 1900s. Um, Yeah, 2000s. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah, people were born in 2000 or 23. That's old. Like, 23, 23 is old. 23 is old. That's when you're old. <laughs> yeah. 24, you might as well give up. <laughs> That's, it's over. <laughs> That's, that means it's over. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, SOC Punk. Um, in the early 1980s, Steve-O and Harrow and Bob are the only two dedicated punks in conservative Salt... How did I, I fuck that up? <laughs> Salt Lake City. <laughs> <laughs> We're so close. I got so... Salk. I got... Salk. I got so complacent at the end. <laughs> I was like, I have this. <laughs> Salt. It's like the easiest city name to fucking name. Salt Lake City. I'm just... I've, it's the worst diction in, on earth. I can, ba- I can, oh, I'm so bad. Barely speak English. <laughs> Barely speak English. But anyway, yeah. so this, <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> that's basically it. <laughs> there's not no, much of a plot. There's not a serious amount of plotting going on in this film. No. Uh, but yeah, it's basically about this guy called Steve-O, who's played by Matthew Lillard. God, Matthew Lillard looks so good in this film. The one and only. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what a, what a, what a, what a hunk. What a hunk. And then there's Heroin Bob, who's kind of like, you know, it's not really that relevant. But he's his mate. He's, he's his buddy. He's a little sidekick, and he is played by a guy called Michael Gorgian, who I've he's, never heard of. He's good in the movie. He's pretty good, yeah. Um, and there's loads of like loads of side characters that we to get introduced to and see their stories briefly, like just little. Yeah, Jason Segal's in the film. Yeah, man, that really did remember when he popped up. I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Is that? It is." Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um, there's loads of weird people. Summer Phoenix, James Duvall. Like it's kind of like it's kind of like the guy s- from Happy Gilmore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like it's like nowhere. <coughs> if yes, you take nowhere's cast and you extract um, a small am- amount of its sensibility, and then you get um, you get the uh, the fucking the the tonal vibe of uh, of, of SLC punk. It's uh, they're not really similar at all, but they have it's the same kind of thing where you have there's just random characters and you're like, uh, he's famous. Like, why is he playing? Like, why does he have three lines in this yeah. film? <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, but no, it's it's a it's a it's a really it's a mad film, which has no real plot. It's kind of hard to follow. It's a hangout movie. It's a it's a pure hangout movie. You can stick on stick on the background. If you're at a party, you stick this on the background. No one has to watch it. It's just there. Um, Good vibes. It's, it's a vibe piece. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a mood piece. Like most of our fucking fakes. 
Yeah, really. Mm. Yeah. Excuse me. So it's like um so I read that this film is kind of like or I didn't read, it wasn't like a a, a review or anything. But um the way this film call it kind of deals with the punk subculture. Mm. Which is something that we're intimately familiar with. Yes, we've Dabbled in punk. <laughs> dabbled? <laughs> I've been part of the subculture, but... <laughs> I've read of it. I've read about it many times. It's very yeah. interesting. Does it even really exist? I don't think it really does. Yeah, it, really, it really lived fast and died very quickly. <laughs> yeah, like you have punk bands. Like I know people in punk bands, but I, like they wouldn't say they're punks. No mm. one would... I don't know anyone who would call themselves a punk. Oh man, if someone said it came up to me and was like, I'm a punk, I'm like, you're a fucking poser. <laughs> <laughs> Especially now, You're bro. a loser. You're man. a fucking loser. <laughs> Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> you're the jock, man. Yeah, I'm the jock. I am the he jock. Doesn't, he doesn't deal with the punks. I'd fucking bully a punk if I saw one in real life. <laughs> yeah, they're, it's a punk Emos kinda... are cool. Goth's cool. If you're a punk. I'm an emo. I'm an emo. Mm. I, 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 I stand emo. Are you an emo or are you a goth? I'm, I have the fringe. I'm an emo. <laughs> yeah, true. <it's you. laughs> Kids always called me emo back in the day. I've embraced. <laughs> I've embraced the lifestyle. Embraced what I am. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, apparently the guy James Randino, he was he was a punk himself in Salt Lake City. So it's kind of semi autobiographical mm. and like you know like a kind of pseudo documentary, but it's not. So it's narrated by Matthew Lillard, his character uh, Steve-O. Uh, it's a really, really good. Like I don't know, like when you say like that's a great narration. Like what does that mean? Yeah, it, it, it is. It like carries the film. It like really, um, it like provides this kind of like anchor that you can hold on to, uh, with all these like kind of like conflicting like mad kind of ideologies. Yeah, and these stuff like that coming mad in. stories going on. And, but you have this like kind of through line <laughs> of Matthew Lillard, um, just kind of narrating, explaining, and uh, providing his his internal monologue. Um, to the to the to the viewer the entire time, and helps to make sense of it not just in terms of like you know not logical sense because the, the film isn't very logical, uh, but it helps you kind of like, um, it helps anchor the mood. Mm. It helps kind of keep the story on a straight line because it, 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 without without that kind of narrative uh, that route uh, it could just go fucking anywhere. Yeah, know? yeah. And it, like that's not what you want. Like th- this kind of film needs the the kind of. Uh, the solidity that that's provided by yeah. Matthew is very, very, very well done uh, narrative uh, voiceover. He's a great performance. He's ah, so he's great. He's like so such a good like, actor. Like, like you asked the question before. Why was he not an ending really yeah. after like, the mid two thousands? Like after he did Scooby Doo, what the fuck did he do? Without a paddle, which yeah, I also besides, watched. Yeah, which you said that <laughs> to my to my question earlier. <laughs> <laughs> like I need to. I'm gonna pull up his IMDb or not his IMDb, his letterbox because I'm not ancient. Um. What did he do? Oh, yeah, he was in Scream. What did he do? So, like, uh, his Wikipedia page controversies. He's in the sentence. like, damn. Sexual yeah. abuse. Yeah, I know. Racism. Yeah, just, just anti-Semitism. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> he was in He's All That. He was in loads of Scooby-Doo movies. Like, as in, not, like, the animated ones. Yeah, no, he took over Casey Kasem's, like, um, voiceover kind of... Um, he took over Casey Kasem as the voice actor for Shaggy. That must be where he went, and he just didn't need to do anything else because they say he made bank off that. I'd say he did, yeah. Okay, that is what he did because I'm literally just scrolling through. Yeah, that's all he's done. That's what he did. Okay, good for him. Good for him. Um, he's in Twin Peaks. He is in Twin Peaks. He's, in, he's actually not much. He's in the the Return, but he's not in it much. Mm. Um. He's in Serial Mom, which is very fucking good. But yeah, no, this is like a cool, like, um, kind of brief overview, I guess, of like the history of punk, Mm. kind of, um, in terms of like, we introduced to Matthew Lillard, and he's like, this is punk, and there's a line in it where he's just like, people say that the Sex Pistols started, started punk rock, um, some people say it was Velvet Underground and the Ramones in New York. I say I don't give a fuck because who gives a shit who started punk music? Mm. It's not about the music, man. It's about the love and the lifestyle and all that. Uh, and it's like, yeah, that's like... Fair enough. Fair enough. Like, who gives a fuck who started punk? <laughs> yeah, who really cares? <laughs> like, um, even like even when he's saying that, it's just like, 
he's like showing all, all these people like he claims they're posers like people that are like in america that have like british flags on their denim jacket and it's like mm. what the fuck is this like you're not british you live in salt lake city utah in the middle of fucking america yeah. why are you wearing that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah um like Not you're point. clearly just doing it for the fashion and then he's going through like his different mates and he's talking about like um jason seagal's character i can't remember his name is but he's like this dude is the biggest punk i've ever seen and he doesn't wear his clothes but that ties into like the overarching thing of the narrative which is like like a character later on says to Matthew Lillard, she's like, "You look like you're wearing a uniform. Like you're dressing up as a punk, but mm. that's a uniform. <laughs> like that's not being punk. Is being individual. Is being an individual, which is why Jason Segal's character is more punk than anyone else in the film because he's. I think at one stage he's basically wearing a t-shirt that's like a trans flag. It's, it's fucking pink." Uh, blue and white mm. and he's just like chilling there he's like enjoying the music and then he just beats the fuck out of people when he wants to yeah, <laughs> like yeah he just yeah. looks like a ra- or an average dude but then he's just bar you <laughs> he just does what he wants yeah um, true punk lifestyle mm-hmm. you know um, yeah the film's more of like a, a document than like a like a kind of a, a solid narrative with a point mm. you know yeah cause you know when you get to the end of the film to jump back to the end before we yeah. Before we return to the beginning and then briefly into the middle and then back to the beginning again. And uh, at the end of the film it's kinda like the whole thing is like, Yeah, I'm a poser. Yeah, he was a poser the entire I'm time. I'm a poser the entire time. And um he kind of like shakes off I don't know, would you say the shackles of his uniform? Yeah, the shackles yeah. of like of want of wanting of identifying with something so closely that you let it kind of take over your personality without it being your personality, you know? Um which and then he he becomes a lawyer. He goes to Harvard and becomes a lawyer. Um, but like, so it's semi autobiographical, like somewhat of like an actual document of the time. Um, but it's not like a, a punk film where you're like where like it ends and it's like you know punk lives forever. Mm. It's more like yeah, this is kind of it's kind of like a really it's honest been, telling yeah. of like what happened. Yeah, it's like oh yeah, we just like we b- believed in the rebellion and. That we just grew, Nothing grew. ever came of it. Yeah, we got older and like it all kind of faded away. Yeah, and like that's like I think he says like when I was younger, I never thought of the future because I thought the world was going to end. But now that that's not going to happen, I need to do something with yeah. my life. Yeah, I need to actually do something. I need to get a job. I need to get a family. I need to, you know, have a life. Yeah, in, within the system where that can't allow me to do anything else. Yeah, yeah. Where he'd been slating his parents at the start of the film because they were originally punks or hippies or something like that, mm-hmm. and then they slowly they betrayed their old their younger selves. I, did, be- I didn't sell out. I bought in. That's what his dad says. Yeah, I bought in. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, they became like Reagan Republicans, um, which is like you know the classic, the classic story. Like the hippies, you know, sold out or whatever in the seventies, and then became Reagan voters in the eighties, um, and then punk kind of did the same thing ish. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's kind of sad. They voted for Clinton though, which was even worse. Yeah, <laughs> in certain ways. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's kind of. S- Kind of sad, nihilistic. Yeah. Um, it's but like, yeah, nothing, nothing, there's, like, you can't change this system. Yeah, that's so, that's awful. Yeah. That's so, but like, that's, I think, I was kind of expecting something different. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you look at the film as, like, a document rather than, like, a convention, like, something like, you know the way Sing Street, it's all about, like, I have seen string, Sing Street. Oh, you know the vibe of it, you know? It's like the Sing Street I can imagine. <laughs> Sing Street doesn't end with like, yeah, I just fucking sold out and started voting for Finna Fall, you know? <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh, you have, you know, the power, you know, music and stuff. Those kinds of films. Yeah, yeah. We're all kind of like, oh, like, you know, we, I, I learned to, you know. We can make change to music. Woo. Yeah, yeah. I learned to believe in myself. I learned to, uh, you know, speak to the girl that I liked, stuff like that. It's like some kind of lesson. I had, like the, there's no real the lesson at the end of this is basically give up, you know. Yeah. If there is a lesson, or kind of fo- feel like be yourself. Be yourself in a, in a totally different way to what you'd expect. Yeah. Be yourself and si- like be part of a system because you can't change it. So you might as well like somewhat benefit from it, mm. but try and be yourself as much as possible. Mm, yeah. And um, which he, but to like, the extent that there is a point at all. You what? Know, to the extent that there is a point. You yeah. Know? There. Yeah. Like if there's like because it is. I just see it seems more like it's just like a telling a story of what happened rather than like 
trying to tell it with some kind of ulterior motive, being like, this is what you should learn from this. Yeah, this yeah. Just, this is what happened. This is how things went. This is how Blake Punk died, essentially. This is what the scene was. And this is what happened, you know. Um, which is, I think, the best way to look at the film. Yeah, cause, and it's not like a documentary, but it's like, as you said, it's a it's a document on what happened. Mm. It's this one guy telling his story, like, yeah, I was, and even the fact that, like, yeah, it's like, yeah, I was a, sorry. It's a document of, like, yeah, I was a punk, but that scene died and we had to move on mm. to on and you know essentially had to grow up because punk is a a you a young rebellion but then when nothing comes of that rebellion then you assimilate back into the system and um, but even when he's when match Lilith's character is like yeah when i thought about it i never was a punk to begin with i was a nerd mm. i was a dweeb i played dungeons and dragons when i was younger and <clears throat> it was just something to do <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Which is like, I think kind of seems to be all the way with like punk. You know, this is like, it was an energy. It was this like youth ang- uh, angst mm. that went on. But like nothing could have came from it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A way of finding yourself. It's interesting. And I never, I don't think I've ever really heard or thought about this, that you know, in Reagan nomics and Thatcher, England is where punk came from. Mm, yeah, so that's yeah. the only time where it could have came. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a lot of people are really mad, but they can't do anything about it. So you start yelling into microphones. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just because we're talking about um scenes and like art and stuff like that, artistic movements. Mm. Have you seen core core on TikTok? This is something completely different. But we'll come back core, to core core. Is that like? Cottage core, core, N- core. It's um dark core, night core. It's hard to explain. It's essentially montages of videos from the internet stick stick to, stuck together with like music playing over it. But each, like the videos by themselves, like on top of each other, creates like a new meaning. Mm. So a lot of them is like anti-capitalist, anti-industrialism, anti you know war and stuff like that. But it's something like, like people are like, this is like a gen, this is like the first like Gen Z artistic movement, because mm. when you're watching it, like this could never have been done in any other. Yeah, it's yeah. the like incorporating memes into the into it and stuff like that. And um, the only reason we're talking about that is like, I was going to ask like, where are the punks now? Where is because we have that's the a, same. That's a great question. We have the same thing now, where it's just like. People are fed up. People are angry. But it's almost like because you can look at the past and see how punk failed and how every other, you know, you know, ang- teenage angst revolution has failed that you kind of just give up. Because mm. all those videos, that like core core videos I've seen, are so fucking melancholy, me- filled with melancholy because it's like... Are those like the Ryan Gosling edits? Mm, yes I see them yes uh, I think wait, so wait, wait, with funk music playing in the background I'm gonna say yes but uh, I don't know oh man we, we actually we, they come <clears> up <throat> so much and I see so many of them work there's there's like so many different like subcultures within it mm-hmm. I don't know if this is core core but there's like you know sad edits of like Ryan Gosling and there's fucking Night Call playing in the background or whatever <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I think that might be it but then you have fucking white supremacist ones with like mass shootings mm-hmm. and it's the same music and it's really well edited and then you have the same one, and it's like Soviet Russia, and it's like you know tanks, and they're like it's the Internationale is playing, um, and like it's intercut with like like uh, edited images of like you know uh, Bernie Sanders and stuff. And it's mm. like it's it's all very strange. Yeah, I think that is core core. It could be right wing yeah. core core, but it's core core. Right, right wing core core is fucking terrifying. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, it is because it's, they're really well made. Uh, but yeah, what is punk? today yeah it's like a fr- yeah, everything's fractured it's all digitized um yeah that sounds really interesting i, I haven't heard about that before mm. i'll have to look into that um but yeah what is punk today yeah like what where are the where is this like rage but i don't think uh, that rage doesn't seem to exist or uh, it, it definitely does well no it no no as in like in this form yeah yeah it's like, not like an identity you have it in your like daily life as much I they guess. still see people. You see, like the, you see the kids these days, and how they're, they have their, they have they see they see more kind of. I don't know if like, I just didn't know people, 
Like, you know, like you know, the bankies and all. You know, mm-hmm. they 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 had their their. Where did the bankies go? Where did the bankies go? Whatever a punk. Where did the bankies go? They all go? died off. They had nowhere to go. They froze to death <laughs> in the big freeze. <laughs> uh, the beast from the east killed them off. But like that was kind of the only, you know, scene that mm-hmm. I could remember from when we were like. They were never, they were like emos and goths. They were just kind of emos and goths and like. Uh, skaters. Yeah, skaters and stuff. <clears throat> but like, I don't know if this if it's different now. But they seem like they have they're kind of like they have like their specific styles and they all kind of clump together. Mm-hmm. Did you ever see that? Yeah, yeah. I kind of noticed that. But um, now there is like a lot of like angst online. It's mm-hmm. all very online though. You know, you don't see it inhabited in a uh, person as much. There's not really any like there's no real art attached to it in terms of like like popular art. Mm-hmm. Like the same way you'd have um, like the Sex Pistols would see this opportunity as like the punk scene. This is something to exploit. Let's make a lot of money out of it. Um, you don't really have that now, there's, but there's a lot of the same kind of like energy there. Mm-hmm. But you know, they just like just oh, let's put out Ariana Grande's next like single or whatever. Yeah, um, because it's not really a, like a, a like an artistic. There's no no one really taking like, advantage of it, capitalizing on it. But like that's the thing is like as soon as they do, it's like immediately commodified. And yeah, it's yeah, stripped yeah. of all its meaning. It's like it does. Why well, hasn't it been commodified though? I don't know. <clears throat> no idea. You know, that doesn't. It's just it's very strange to me. You know, because all, all these things are very, very popular. Uh, but all the media you see s- that appeals or that's trying to appeal to those age groups um, and even people like us, it's all very, like, happy-go-lucky and very, like, optimistic. Mm-hmm. It's all very, very optimistic. Yeah. You know, and the Doomer stuff is all, like, so edgy oh, and, like, God, yeah. pessimistic. Yeah. That's, like, it's, like, cringe, you know? Yeah. But there's no in-between. There's no, there's no like, there's nothing authentic, man. I'm just turning into a punk here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's not authentic, No, but there man. isn't. Like, like, um, but I'm wondering, is that just because there has been so many waves of trying to do something about that, but, like, in youth, and now, because of the internet, it's like, well, we can't do anything. Like, it's just, like, it's, like, like, it is almost, like, a Doomer idea of, like, there can't, to a, a like a a uh, what's the word a travesty of, of riches or something what's that what's that word I have no the, idea the term it's like there's too much going on it's like you go onto the internet you have everything everything's there mm-hmm. you know and um, you'll you'll find some niche which will kind of like speak to something that you're feeling yeah if you look for it yeah um so you don't necessarily need a band or like a movie or anything to kind of hang on to um so the products are kind of are the product speaking in like mm. commodified terms already like. But, like, the product that could be sold to you is kind of already there. Yeah. Um, but any marketing executives out there, that's a that's a good idea. That's a good idea. But, like, yeah, everything's so kind of, like, confused and the wires are all very crossed. Um, but there definitely is some kind of uh, similar vibes. Mm. I'd never heard of Core Core. I have to, I have to look that up. Yeah, no, there's some... G- I've watched, like, a few videos of it and they're very good. So mm. That was one of those, like, one of the most depressing fucking videos I've ever seen where it's just compilations of people being like just video after video after video of like of like someone being like how do people work every day how do they do the same thing every Mm. day like someone being like i don't understand how my parents did this their entire lives like i'm i'm 23 and i feel like already giving up Mm. and just like constant videos like that i was like oh god that is just like how a vast majority of this generation feels yeah i was like fuck me that is and i think i had 500 million like 500 million 500,000 likes mm. and I was like oh Jesus fucking Christ there's so many I yeah. think that is part of it mm. it's that like the youth has already been worn down before they get to the stage where they can rebel <laughs> yeah yeah but there's not like a there's not be a point there where it mm. just kind of like turns back in on itself I've seen a compilation before where it was like it was a, one of those sad edits but I had uh, it was just clips of streamers because another way, but like obviously back in the day, not a lot was recorded. Well, if you're recording something, is you're spending a lot of money to do it. Yeah, but now so you you're making sh- now you can record for pretty much for, for like the cost. Yeah. Is, is you can't even. It's so. Everyone small. has a smartphone. Yeah, you can record pretty much everything that you do. Like right now, we're just recording a conversation, a three-hour conversation. Yeah. Every two weeks, you're recording a three-hour conversation just for the crack. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't cost it's anything. For fun. Like, yeah, it's for fun. Uh, but there's like this, um, this clips of streamers. Um, who like obviously like record themselves like professionally or semi professionally for like hours and hours every single day. I was just think like, these sad clips of them in like like weaker moments mm. where they're just kind of like like what like what am I doing? Or it's like oh like you're getting upset about like their personal life or like something that's going on or their financial troubles or like you know someone's passed away. I was just like these really like intimate like 
deeply really, intimate moments. Yeah, these yeah. really in, deeply intimate moments that you would never have seen like 10, 15 years ago would not have been recorded like at all. Mm. There would be no record of like this kind of, you know, uh, this kind of like personal moment where a person is just alone in a room talking to themselves and feeling really sad. And it was all cut together. Yeah. I was like, this is fuck, this is horrible to watch. Yeah, it's, but it's also, you know, it's also evocative and it's also kind of, because, you know, the montage and the fact that someone has posted it means it takes on a different kind of meaning. Mm-hmm. And there's some kind of like, a, there's some kind of solidarity there. Yeah, there is. Where the person has posted it saying like, this and is... And there's a compilation is, of other people having that feeling as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, that there is some kind of, this isn't, that this person isn't alone, even if they feel it. Um, and that there is some kind of like, uh, collective experience yeah. going on there, you know. I guess that's the thing with like the whole core core genre in, in total is like you're watching and it's like, oh wow, like this whole this is like a compilation of videos that like is expressing this feeling that I have. Yeah. It's yeah. like I'm not alone in feeling this and this video has like, you know, three million likes, so clearly a lot of other people feel it the same way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um no it the original core core videos were all anti capitalist and uh, anti-industrialism and they're very very good i can't mm. think of any there's like two main content creators that did them on tiktok but yeah they're very good mm. um but just back to lcc punk <laughs> 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 um that kind of but that feeling of teenage angst that's what this film is about yeah um and i go like it doesn't work out for them like you know fucking heroin bob dies um <laughs> Of a no, of a perk overdose. Yeah, he mixes uh, perks and alcohol. Yeah, and he dies in sleep. Grim. Grim. Yeah, he dies. Like the party scenes and raves as well, like yeah, incorporated yeah. into it. Um, but it is like, like this. I think, like the film has like very punk aesthetic in terms of its like editing mm, and yeah, stuff it's, like that. It's edited really well. It's yeah. like, there's a lot of energy to it. There's a lot of like, it's really in your face. And um, that's really cliched, but like it is like, like it's oh, proper. Like literally like fuck you as a camera. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> and he has like uh, he's like intercut. He's kind of like uh, collaged with certain scenes where he's like a talking head on the side mm, of the screen. It's very that good. That bit was so cool. Yeah, where yeah. like he's out. The, he's at a he's commentating. At a t- yeah, he's at a table where like it looks like he's in the scene, and then this camera pans, but he stays where he is in the corner. I was like, that's such a cool fucking yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's such a cool shot. Very creative in terms of how it's directed. Uh, which is, you know, probably the, mo- the most interesting part about it is, pr- is its style. Mm. Uh, but like not in a bad way. Because that's what it's about. It's about the style. It's about the of style. Punk, yeah. You know, and maybe how, you know, how they kind of fell short and maybe ways that didn't, stuff like that. So it's, it's all part of the overall themes, you know, that the, it's all point of the film. Mm-hmm. So it actually makes sense. Not like Baz Luhrmann with your fucking bullshit. Why is why is it why is it ac- why is it Shakespeare why is it accurate? So fucking colorful. Too. Yeah. <laughs> why is there Kanye West music playing at the Great Gatsby party? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I like the bit where they beat the shit at the Nazis as well. That's cool. Yeah, they really don't like the Nazis. <laughs> they yeah. really didn't like the Nazis. Yeah. Fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. Can't blame them. Can't argue with that. Yeah. I they, even the fucking I guess that's part of the fucking core core stuff as well as like just how like punk rock is just like oh yeah we can just turn this into like Nazi stuff as well yeah no yeah they like, it, it, they really can they really really can yeah like s- some of the white supremacist edits are insanely well put together <laughs> yeah it's it's incredible I don't know how they do that it's the thing we were talking about that wedge between left wing and right wing. Stick a wedge into it, and it can be easily be yeah, yeah, turned yeah, into yeah. the other. Uh huh. Yeah, it's very true. It's very, like very true. Angry against the system. That anger against the system can be turned very easily one way or the other. Yeah, I actually, I actually read a paper on that before about like infiltration of like uh, internet subcultures, where they would go in. It was like a tactic where they'd go in and like post, like for example, if someone on from the far right, or say someone on the far left went into a a far right like meme group, whatever mm-hmm. they start posting, you know, far right themes and stuff like that. And over time, they just slowly kind of like, like a ship of Theseus kind of thing, where they they put more and more like kind of, uh, whatever icons or like ideas that were kind of common mm-hmm. to the two different ideologies, but were like kind of over time pushing them more in the direction of where they wanted the group to go. Yeah, and it would work quite well. That was a few years ago, though, so I don't know if that actually works. Yeah. But uh, 
It seems like it seems like it would work. I I don't see why it wouldn't work. It seems like a pretty common sense strategy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like oh, we're infiltrating, like slowly tease out these ideas. It's like what about uh, you know, what about this? You know, what about that? It's like I agree with you there. What about this? Do you know anyone that posts like stuff like that? Um, video like shit on their stories and stuff like that, and just like. Wow, I can't believe that you think that. Like, is in like Jordan Peterson and stuff, or whatever. Yeah, I don't know anyone like that. To be honest, I know some of the posts, Andrew Tate videos. But the next video, with the next thing, will be a people for profit, uh, anti, yeah. you know, uh, capitalist, like pro yeah, refugee yeah. stuff. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck is this? <laughs> uh, a multitude of yeah, opinions. multitude of opinions. Anger, but that's but those Andrew yeah. Tate videos are like anger at the system, sort of it things. Yeah. But it's literally like that is like both sides of the spectrum in this like in this like five fucking stories that you have to put up I suppose you, you could clip a lot of what Andrew Tate says and be like oh this guy is like some mad communist you know mm-hmm. some of the things he said you know did you ever see that fucking there's a there's a oh it's a streamer talking to someone that's a huge Andrew Tate fan and everything that they're saying is like anger at the system they're talking about the matrix the matrix and, yeah yeah and they're just like oh angry at the system and like the ruling class or whatever but then he asks like who are the ruling class? And the guy goes, Jews. Jews. <laughs> and it's like, oh, but well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, that's the... That's a, that's a, that's, that's, that's the, the problem there. Yeah, no, that's... um. The Matrix, man. The Matrix, yeah. That's what I mean, apparently. It's like, Can't goodbye. believe people unironically say that. The Matrix. I know. We live in the Matrix. Oh, they just fuck off. That's a movie from the 90s. <laughs> if they just actually watch the Matrix as well. They'd have a better idea. They, 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 they don't watch The Matrix. He's just leaning back and he's like, you realize that The Matrix is directed by two trans women, yeah? <laughs> yeah, you realize what The Matrix is actually about, no? Yeah. Um, yeah. Silly people. Silly people. Silly, silly gooses. Silly gooses. Yeah. Will we leave it at that? We'll leave it there. We're exiting The Matrix. We're exiting. We're plugging out. We're plugging out. Sorry, guys. We'll pull back in in two weeks' time. Where we will be talking about 1966 Daisies, a experimental feminist film that I've heard very good things about. I think it's Dutch. Mm. I think it's Dutch. Something like that. Um, maybe it's French. Dutch or French. It's European, so they're all the same. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> French, European, feminist cinema, experimental could you get more Paropod than this? I can give you one better. It's 75 minutes long. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. So, yeah, there we go. Holy like, smokes. There we go. I was just like, I saw that on my watch list. And I was like, I think it's 77 minutes long. Let's watch that. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And like highly acclaimed experimental Sign feminism. Let's go. Let's do it. Sign me up. Okay. So we will cool. leave out that for this week. I hope everyone has a fantastic first. Well, no, by this. Hope everyone has a fantastic <laughs> mid two weeks in <laughs> February. <laughs> uh, I agree. Yeah, but <laughs> not put it. <laughs> Running out of ways. Of February. <laughs> Running out it's of ways. It's always a tough time in the middle of Feb. Tell you. It's the toughest time of the year. That Everyone fucking says it. spring equinox. It's fucking a, hell. Oh, fucking Valentine's Day. It's going to be tough. Oh, that is tough. That is tough. You're there, right? Is that, that is next week. Okay. It oh, is, shit. Is. <laughs> oh, boss. Oh, bollocks. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.